It's time for Mac Break Weekly, episode 196. It's Apple versus Google in a fight to the finish. Apple's almost as big as Microsoft now. We'll talk about their market cap. And we celebrate 20 years of the best Macintosh newsletter ever. Tidbits. Mac Break Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 196, recorded May 25th, 2010. The Burrito Smugglers. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Hover.com. Hover is domain name registration and management that's simple. For 10% off your new domain, go to twit.hover.com. And by Gazelle, the easy way to sell or recycle used gadgets lying around your home or office. Collect your used gadgets and gazelle them today at g-a-z-e-l-l-e.com. And by audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash MacBreak. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show that covers the entire world of Cupertino and environs. On the show with us today, we've got a big cast, starting with Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun Times. Good How to you see doing? You. Hello, hello, Mister Mister Mutton Chops. You're looking particularly clear today. Do we have a? Ah, uh, yes, because I've switched to the I switched to the Logitech uh, something something. You'll edit in, in editing. You'll basically dub over the actual model <laughs> number. Come on, Carl. Yes, it says Carl Zeiss, and it says Tessar 2.0. Exactly. <laughs> so, yes, a very, a very nice uh, uh, very nice camera that I've had in the office for about a year now, but I'm only now getting around to using as my regular. I, I, I'm, I'm giving, I'm giving my, I'm one of those extreme home makeover guys are going over. I lied my, I lied my butt off, said that I have three kids were dying of different things. So they're coming in and giving my office sort of a Can I say, makeover. it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing they did was put that, put that piece of black cardboard in the back. Yeah, what is up. that? <laughs> That's that's the portal where all the others went. Uh, <laughs> I thought it might be the iPhone 4G behind there. I, I just well, no, 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 certainly not. Certainly not. <laughs> we, we, and if that, we, we wouldn't be able to say so. There he is, Merlin Mann, looking a little scary right now. Good morning, Merlin. Hi, I'm getting I'm getting a little bit of Asimov myself over here. Ah, I need a haircut. Look at really that. Bad. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, he I was nice he was he and Dr. Everett Coop were the uh, kings of the mutton chop. Huh. And uh, who was the president that had him? Was uh, who was the MacArthur? MacArthur Chester B. Yeah. Arthur, I believe. Well, is most Chester, of them up until B. Arthur. B. Arthur. B. Arthur. Chester, B. Chester B. Arthur. B. Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Chester. You shouldn't have killed that butterfly six million years ago. Weren't you warned to stay on the mark, <laughs> Also here with us. Hey, look at that. Mr. Scott born in the pink from Gig Habba. Haven't seen you in ages, Scott. How have you been? Well, I've been busy, 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 but uh, wonderful to be back and uh, back here in Gig Harbor for the summer and uh, glad to see that all my friends are well and keep getting these emails from people saying, did I miss the screw you moment between you and Leo? How come you're not on the show? I hate to just break the news to everybody, but not everything has to end badly. Am I not? Am I, am I like considered to be the guy who like pisses and alienates people and pisses them off? No, it's me that they think is that. Oh, so you said screw clear. you to me. I get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they, they wanted they to know if they're nice, Leo. You have a reputation. I got a couple of things going on. I may not be able to be here every week. Well, we uh, love having you. And the Tommy Bahama looking very nice today. Tommy Bahama thing. But no Tommy Bahama hat because I can't make my creative live headset work with my hat yet. Looks good. <laughs> Looking fine, looking sharp. I, did, I am proud of the fact that I still have hair at my age, Leo. <laughs> we also want to welcome Mr. Adam Angst of Tidbits, the original, the one and only, the best Macintosh <laughs> newsletter. I've been reading it for, is, it's more than 10 years, isn't it? Oh, uh, 20 years as of April. What? Actually. Wow. 20 years. Holy I mean, cow. <laughs> You don't look I, that I, old, I, Adam. Let me look, tell you, look we at him. started he, this back in 1990. We were young and stupid and, and, and had no clue that we were going to be doing it 20 years later. That's a, that it really is amazing. I was reading you an OS 7 um, on a reader. <laughs> you had a special reader. It would turn Easy the mailing view. list into it had an app. Do you remember this? Is Easy View is written by a guy <gasps> named Keith Tyler, who was a computer science, he still is a computer science professor in Turkey. 
And uh, and through his, Turkish connections, that was how I learned that the actual the president of Turkey at one point was a tidbits reader. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. That's Turkish really delight. neat. Turkish delight. <laughs> well, you, you can subscribe, T-I-D-B-I-T-S dot com. It's absolutely free. How many... How many millions of readers you must have had? Over uh, we 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 have a we're not not huge that way. We're probably in the fifty thousand or so. But I mean, uh, uniques over twenty years. Yeah, and the thing is, is that those are for the most part people who've been with us for a long, long time. I mean, the big spike in our sub, our subscriptions came in ninety four, uh, ninety three, ninety four, when my internet starter kit for Macintosh books were really big. Right. And um, but people got on the internet then and they subscribed to Tidbits because the book gave them instructions on that, and they've been with us ever since. And which is kind of scary sometimes because I occasionally get mail from you know relatives saying, "Could you please remove so and so because he died?" Ooh. And, oh. Yeah. Wow. It's like, oh, oh, he's been with us for twenty years. That's kind of wow. sad. Wow. And you're doing now, you're doing the Take Control uh, books, which are uh, yes. PDFs. They're awesome yes. books. Yeah, awesome books. books. Yeah. The, yeah, the Back to My MacBook is the single best resource I've ever seen for unraveling how to do anything with Back to My Mac. It's really good. Uh, we, and I God knows we need that. Pass it on to Glenn Fleischman, who is a wonderful guy for anything networking and, and airport, Wi-Fi, all that stuff. Glenn knows it cold. We have a new one um, coming out next week, uh, Take Control of iPad Networking and Security, which Glenn has done. And there's tons, tons and tons of net iPad networking details. You don't even think about iPad as having details because Apple tries to hide them. But Glenn's ferreted them out. Awesome. Tidbits.com, you got to read it. 20 years. You pretty much invented blogging, <laughs> I think, with that. Yeah, when the whole blogging thing came along, we're like, well, so what's the point? We've been yeah. doing that. <laughs> we do that. So yeah. WWDC is coming up. Is it, uh, is it next Tuesday? Is it, uh, I can't, it's a week from no, Tuesday. It's a week, week from Monday. Week yeah. from Monday. And uh, Steve Jobs has announced, you won't be disappointed. Once, Ooh, really? Once, <laughs> I'm always, <laughs> once again, an email from the Steve uh, he's just been on fire lately. Uh, somebody uh, wrote to him after Google I.O., which was last week. And Google, by the way, especially on the Thursday speech, uh, Vic Gundotra, Gundotra, Gundotra really was just shooting from the hip at Apple at every moment, you know. Um, he, 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 and, and said, well, what do you think after Google's announcements? Is, can, Apple, can Apple keep up with iPhone 4? And Steve says, <laughs> you won't. Be disappointed, which could mean anything. I don't know what it means. What does it mean? What does it mean, Adam Engst? You know, Steve Steve is the most interesting CEO around because you have to figure that Apple PR cringes every time he sends email. But at the same time, you know, he's the, the only voice that will actually respond reliably with an Apple. But you can always... But don't you think he made it that too. way? I mean, isn't it his creation? Yeah, but he didn't used to do it that much. I mean, the the whole one line email thing has really picked up over the last you know couple of years. Yeah, a couple of years, couple of months. Well, a couple of months, even more so. But yeah. you know, I, you know, there's a an old guy who lives fairly near me in Lansing, about ten fifteen miles away, who sent email to Steve a couple of years ago and got response back, and uh, and you know, man, he's he's on fire now. You know, he sends Steve mail probably once a week, and I don't think he's ever heard back <laughs> again. But uh, you, know, you only need to get one answer. And see, yeah, I get right. now I get all these email from people saying Steve answers his email. How come you don't? <laughs> Steve doesn't answer all his email. I'm just saying that, right? <laughs> we answer all if our I, email. If, hey. if, if, I, if, I, if I could answer oh, God, one out of stop. every 430,000, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. One line, <laughs> and it, pub it gets published. So uh, um, one email to Steve thing, asked him what he thought of Gizmodo, saying Google had leapfrogged Apple uh, with Android 2.2. Steve's response, three words, not a chance. Yeah. Should have really done it this way. Not a chance. Yeah. <laughs> and they're doing those after it. <laughs> 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 If I could do it with my head, I would. Another emailer via Mac Rumors asked if Google was showing up Apple with its developer conference and if Apple had big announcements for WWDC. Four words this time: you won't be disappointed. <laughs> but come on, if, if you cut the, if you cut all these together like into like a virtual like YouTube press conference, wouldn't it seem like the most like like reporters talking to like the Soviet premier about how well the 1980 Olympic Games are going to go? <laughs> premier, is it going to be full of excitement? You bet, comrade. <laughs> and we're going to our productivity and our technology? Absolutely. You it, almost, it almost feels like a Turing test. Like, is it, re <laughs> is it really Steve? Is it a robot? Because it could be. Steve or Eliza? Yeah. You know, of course, the Joya Tech uh, comic, uh, Nitrozac and Snaggy, made this great Steve Jobs email 
responder, which basically had all of those. Yep, nope. <laughs> They're going to have to add a few. You won't be disappointed. How do you feel when you say, when is printing coming to the iPad? <laughs> I feel good. So uh, what do you think Not you won't be disappointed means, Andy? Do you have any insight into what we'll see at WWDC? Uh, I can tell you that I don't have any specific inside information on what's going on at WWDC. I did not even know that for a fact there was going to be a Steve Jobs keynote on Monday. I had to do one of those leap of faith bookings of uh, of airfare to get over to WWDC. Uh, I, I do think that as soon as uh, we weren't 10 minutes into that Google I.O. keynote uh, on day two, the first one was a, was a real first one was a dud. Yeah, first one was a dud. The second one, oh, it was also it was also Google saying, well, in the future, nobody will be using local apps. They're all going to be using cloud-based apps because they're so much better than everything mm -hmm. else. Okay, very nice, very nice. Uh, but yeah, you, we weren't 10 minutes into the day two conference when you know that a lot of whiteboards at Cupertino were at least partially or completely erased saying, okay, where's what the keynote now has to be about at WWDC? It really has to be about not, not directly responding to the points that they were making, but at least to make sure that there is at least a nod towards it. And then anybody who's examining this keynote to 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 get the answer that everything that Google said was rubbish is going to find those answers in yeah. that keynote. There'll it be a direct exactly. response, you think? Well, the thing is, is that Steve Jobs works think the, really think hard on those keynotes for a long time. And, but at the same time, there's, there's always a spot at the start which is more or less open for uh, ad hoc uh, comments that need to be relevant. But most of that stuff, he's been just going over and over and over again for probably, you know, two weeks or a month already. I was told that one... They do a lot of changes at the last minute. I was told that the way it works is all the product managers are supposed to come up with, this is what we want you to do at the keynote. And they line up and Steve sits down and says, yes, no, yes, no, yes, yes, no. And if you, you know, you've got to have a complete demo and he figures out which ones. Now, presumably that's already happened. Or, or you think, Andy, it has it, that they're, they're doing that no, now? No, I think, I, I definitely think it's happened. But I do know that, that, that the, the, the roadmap for the keynote is a little bit, is certainly fluid enough that if a week beforehand they decide that they need to mm -hmm. make, a, make a substitution or change the tone of the intro or make sure that a certain yeah. point that well, it needs to be made, they're going to make it. You know, so if really, Steve if, says that, even if it's 12 hours before the keynote, people yeah. jump. Yeah. I mean, that's that, that's absolutely true. I mean, I have heard rumors about the changes, major changes happening as close as 48 hours before the end. We have seen, uh, I mean, we have seen it, maybe, maybe it's us looking too hard, but it really, I've seen several keynotes where it looked like there was clearly a chunk here that was taken out, or there was a chunk here that was put yeah. in. It's just clear that the flow, oh, okay, move on. <laughs> um, so I, it, I would guess that they have a pretty solid roadmap at this point, but anything yeah. could change, of course. Right, but I, I also think they're not going to make the mistake that Google made. Google made a real, that was a real punk-ass move that diminishes their strength and their influence, or at least their own per public perception of it. Because, Which move? Uh, I'm sorry, the, the move of just hammering at Apple so relentlessly. The way that you do this is that you do it carefully. You make sure that you, inside that conference room, on the whiteboard, you have that list of ways in which Google wants to say that Apple's phone sucks. And you can make sure you get through that bold list, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you make sure that you do not ever directly say Apple's phone right. sucks. You want right. to make sure that those 5,000 people in the room and countless uh, hundreds of thousands of people who are watching that by streaming will get that on their own. When you make that argument and push that button so relentlessly though you're sending the message that we agree that no one thinks that we're as good as right. apple it's a and sign of weakness inwardly, that's what we're worried Show about it. Right. don't tell it yeah it's a sign of weakness and Not i think so. that you know, they have a great the, phone the, the, right. if you're going to give your competitor that much airtime, it's always a dicey deal i mean i remember back in the day when uh, Mamiya ran a, an ad against Hasselblad. It said Hasselblad hasn't changed in years, or something like that. And the <laughs> Hasselblad execs were so excited to be mentioned so prominently <laughs> in the ad that they actually called the magazines and said, "If Mamiya stops running that ad, we'll pay to rerun." <laughs> We'd like to keep running. <laughs> yeah. Well, now so correct I, me I, if I'm wrong, but they, I don't think they actually said the word Apple very often. It was mostly people watching, going, "Well, that's uh, that's no, aimed. Well, every time they wanted to go talk about the performance, they're like, "And now here's the, they 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 ran." Uh, like the, the 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 browser browser war was against uh, the browser in 2.1 and also an iPad uh, that was that was running it. They're okay. also talking about uh, really cool features like being able to share your uh, your your 3G uh, internet connection. Saying, "Oh, come on, come on, Apple, what are you doing? How come you can't tether it like that?" And it's and then I have same to thing. say you and you have to agree because I know you have 2.2 on your Nexus One. I try. I mean, it's free. 
It's, it's, it's see, and, and, and it's painful because I, I haven't unlocked Nex Nexus One, and so I just I, I took the SIM card out of this, <laughs> and I put the SIM card into this. Yep. And then, like about uh, five minutes later, I was getting like Wi-Fi internet sharing off, it's of, a and, off of my iPad and everything yeah. else. Yeah. Now it's, it's, it does it doesn't work quite as cleanly as an as a Wi-Fi, but I just had to say that really stings. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. that hurts yeah. bad. I, I think, you know, I think that last week, and I agree, and I think part of this is that Vic is not as polished a presenter as, as Steve Jobs, and, and Google is, oddly enough, not as strategic, and didn't think, I think they didn't think ahead and say, oh, well, we, this would look bad. I think that they, this was, this was just them going, see, we got you, we got you. But I do have to say, at Google I.O., I felt like Android came of age, and it, it really, I have to say, I'm now saying, you know what might be a very strong contender for the iPad is a Android device with the same form factor. Yeah, that's 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 one of the questions that I raised. I did a 30-day follow-up on my iPad review, saying that the next the, the next real big test for the iPad is when these uh, Tegra 2 processors running Android 2.2 uh, 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 tablets start coming out. And finally, only then will we get the answer to the question: How much of the iPad, iPad success we all like it? How much of that is because it's simply a very fast, sprightly, multi-touch-based computer in a slim tablet form factor that runs forever on battery? And how much of that is directly due to the fact that it's an Apple design product with all the stuff that they do with the software and all the human interface. So not until we get that first four hundred ninety nine dollar yeah. uh, thirty two gig tablet, we're going to find out that well, actually no, any tablet of this form factor at that price for that runs a really good uh, web browser is is at least ninety percent as good as an iPad. The iPad. But they're uh, going to be an uphill battle hoping, given hold, the, hold on, the millions hold on. Apple sold already. Right. Go ahead, Scott. The uh, Apple people are hoping that uh, Google will decide to sell their iPad competitor direct, just like they did their phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works so, out can I ask a, a question? Sure, um, sure, sure. This, uh, a lot of this conversation is pops and buzzes from where I am. But the uh, question uh, I have... Do you mean, do you mean technically to, from Skype? Are you having trouble with Skype? or is it? No, no, no. I just don't follow this stuff. The, um, <laughs> my question is, from a business standpoint, like, you got to assume that... Um, well, I'll tell you why I don't follow this stuff. It's a soap opera from where I stand. Yeah, but like, that's oh, the fun. Uh, it's a no, horse no, no, race. No, I know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just explaining to where my question is coming from. Like, I don't care. I've got a phone. It's fine. Uh, I like it. I, I do stuff with it. Uh, that's what interests me. Um, but um, it's not a criticism, but my question is, like, we read this as this epic mythical story between giants. And so we, we, we you know, obviously it's a very interesting story, but we, we pose it that way. My question is, if we take it as read that Steve Jobs, again, Steve Jobs, we do this metonymy thing where we have one person represent the company, but Google's a smart company, right? They've done a lot of good stuff. From your point of view, this is not a cynical question. When somebody gets up there and makes what sounds like such a not even defensive, but just, you know, confident people don't talk like that. Confident people, you know, if you know Taekwondo, you never have to show it unless you just beat somebody's ass in two seconds. You don't, you know, if you're confident, you don't talk like that. From a business standpoint and a strategy standpoint, what is the primary reason? Who do you, who are you persuading you hope when you talk like that? Are you trying to talk people out of buying iPhones in the interim? Or like, what is, what well, is the doubt, the FUD you're trying to create when you give a crazy talk like let's that? Let's point out, and I think this is really important, that Google I.O. Is, is a developer conference. It is, even though Apple uses WWDC and will in two weeks as a public platform, Google historically does not. It did this week. But I, I really think that the, the audience for this, Merlin, was, was developers. And you have to think, with 200,000 applications in the iPhone App Store, you really are talking to developers and saying you want to develop for Android. That is a very big message. Huge, huge. It, it, it sounds like, I mean, like a lot of these things, like, you know, WWDC, you think with Steve Jobs, we're implying right here that whatever Steve Jobs or whoever says there is going to have a reach way beyond a bunch of guys in, you know, panic shirts, right? Well, it so does, clearly, and I think Google will know this from now on. I don't, I'm not, you know. Right. <laughs> It sounded a lot to me like Microsoft circa 2005. It's funny because Gruber say. pointed out what Gruber said about this was it's now Apple and Google and Microsoft is out of the game. But the way they sounded well, when they were stuck between um, fear of antitrust and uh, pants crapping terror over Google. And they were really for had forgotten, like I've said numerous times, they'd forgotten that they're the empire, right? right? They're, they're the ones that they forgot how to win. And it's, it's just interesting because, I mean, obviously this is a huge company. I'm asking an honest question though. And so do you really think that was just for developers or what's the, how would they know that a talk like that went well, to use my parlance? They're talking people, they're creating 
fear, uncertainty, and doubt about Apple, or they're trying to basically talk you out of investing, or do you really think it was just for developers? No, I think I think it's partly for developers because they know that the weakness of Android right now is in the software library. If you try to look for the same quality, breadth, and caliber of applications that you that you find on the iPhone on the in, in the Android marketplace, it's just not there. Every time I find an app for Android that I really really like, it turns out that it is just a port of an iPhone inter, uh, iPhone app. Uh, but hmm. Google's Google has a different business than Apple does. Apple sells phones directly to people. They sell through AT and T, but chiefly they want uh, the they want the the point of contact to be the Apple Store. Google's strength is the fact that all they have to do is get every single one of these characters to start getting uh, getting uh, Android devices and sell them that way. They don't care about uh, selling directly. They don't care about the hearts and minds arguments. They care about all the clicks and all the data and mm -hmm. all the uh, all the other personal information that they're going to get just by simple fact that they're going to be controlling sort of a point to point. From the for the person standing in the street to the store that gets that click to the uh, to the transaction that's made inside the store, they'll get all that sort of information. They're, ble they're bleeding it's information and money. They're, you say they're kind of bleeding both information and money when Apple wins. Right, and also, and also, I mean, this is I mean, they, they've got a hell of a great new operating system. It's about time that well, they start. They, they they need to start positioning the Android not as the alternative phone, but as a consumer device, just like the iPhone is a consumer device. They're not quite there yet, but maybe by two point four, they'll definitely have a very good consumer grade phone. I, I'll be honest. I think Apple really doesn't need to care about. I mean, Google doesn't need to care whether Apple wins. Google said many times, and I believe it's true that all they want is for you to use the internet more. They make money when you use the internet. They make money off the iPad. They make money off the iPhone. Uh, however, I think what happened is that you what you're hearing there is the enthusiasm internally at Google for open versus closed. And I think that this is the religious yeah, that's war. Marketing. That's marketing. It, I mean, you think that's marketing? That's that's marketing because I, I, well, I, I, hate, I, I don't I hate think to, it's I hate marketing. Quote, I hate, no, I hate, I, hate, I hate to quote myself here, but last week I was, I was, I was thinking. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's well, easy to come up with an original thought on the show. No, yeah. uh, in, last, in last week's column, I was talking about the, the, the keynote and saying that, okay, that's a valid point that Apple is not behind open, you know, a, a, the, a completely open experience. So I think the really great takeaway line uh, from the Google keynote was that uh, we don't we don't care. We have the we think we have the fastest browser, but what we really want is to have the most inclusive browser. But what you can do if you really wanted to take that same sort of mechanism, take the exact take all the data that you got for, uh, out of the Google keynote and run it through the exact same machine that. Google ran Apple's announcements and Apple's ideas from to get the exact same sort of results, which is Google wants you not to use applications that are native to your device because if it doesn't go through the internet, they can't track it. They don't want you, uh, they want you, they also announced Google TV. They want you to make sure that you watch your TV through one of their operating systems and devices because if you don't, they can't f figure out what you watch, when you watch it, when you pause, when you fast forward it, what commercials you, what commercials you went to, what you wanted to look up on the internet after you watched it, point after point after point after point. If you want to interpret uh, Apple's motives as we don't want open systems, we want to control the user experience, you can do that. If you also want to interpret Google's keynote as we hate it when users do something that we cannot observe and monetize, you can interpret it that way. That's why I see this as marketing, marketing, marketing instead of a feature, feature, feature. Adam, you were going to say something. I was going to say, I mean, I, I'm not sure I disagree with you on, on, on the feature, 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 Andy, but I do think that one of the only real chinks in the iPhone ecosystem is the App Store approval policies. And that's one place where Google's openness will take anything is really helping them. And so, you know, not that it's likely to attract all developers away from the iPhone, um, but if they can if they can present a, an alternative platform where developers don't have to put up with a kind of BS that they go through with Apple sometimes, then that's a place where they can compete, where they're really not you know, they're having more trouble competing on the technical aspects and, you know, because these the phones really do more or less the same things. And so for normal users, it's six of one half dozen of another. What they really need to do is go for the developers such that at some point someone will come up with that killer app that is not the same on the iPhone. Yeah. And developers so Apple, care. Apple, 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 Apple has the better counter argument, which is that we don't care about what our users do. Our job, our job is not to trick you, the developer, into making our phones more useful. Our job is to, uh, is to help you to make some money here. 
Uh, and that's the argument that Apple <laughs> consistently makes that you can put things yeah. onto the Android marketplace and they'll be somewhat successful, but you will not have you 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 will not you will the, the next Beatles, the next Rolling Stones of developers will not come through the Android store. It will definitely come through the through the uh, through the iTunes store, and that's the point that they really want to consistently True, make. True, although most developers aren't making squat. So you know, I mean, that that, <laughs> that TechCrunch article that showed the actual numbers, you know, it's clear that it's not a business for you know the vast majority of the developers. We're gonna. Uh, I want to talk a little bit. Uh, hold, hold that thought if you if you don't mind, uh, Scott and, and Merlin. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Google going after Apple's hobby. <laughs> 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 Maybe it's not such a hobby anymore. In uh, just a second, I do. But we have a brand new sponsor. I want to welcome uh, to the show, and I'm actually very glad uh, to welcome him to the show because um, for a long time I have uh, many of our competitors have done ads for a domain registrar that I'm not fond of. How can I phrase this without <laughs> giving them a free plug? <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. And I, and I have to say, I, have, for a long time, have known the guys at Two Cows and think the world of them. They are a great registrar. Uh, we have moved all of our uh, domains, or are in the process of moving all our domains, to their new hover.com, and I want to encourage all of our listeners to take a look at Hover.com. Hover is a domain name registration uh, system, uh, but it also is uh, has very great management tools. And you'll get 10% off your new domain right now if you go to twit.hover, H-O-V-E-R dot com. If now just the cleanliness, the simplicity of this site compared <laughs> the to cleanliness. Huh? You, well, <laughs> yeah, go, go to the other sites, and I'm not just saying one, but go, they're all starting to look like this. Where, you know, you register a domain, and there's 12 pages of things you oh, have yeah. to say. I don't want that. No, I don't want that. No, I don't want that. Uh, it takes 50 clicks to buy a domain these days. It does. Go to hover. I just bought oldguysknowstuff.com, By the way, uh, this is my uh, you. <laughs> do me a favor. Do me a favor, Scott. The next domain, just try twit.hover.com. I'm I'm there right now. I'm yeah. buying something. It's I'm so up beautiful. A it's so simple, so clean. Uh, you may remember them as Domains Direct. They've been doing this since 1997. They are, of course, an ICANN registered uh, registrar. Uh, domain forwarding. Fifteen dollars starts at fifteen dollars. Uh, you want to add an email box, thirty-five dollars. Two six email boxes, sixty dollars. That's a year, and you get ten percent off. But do uh, they have pictures of good-looking female race drivers? No. On their site? <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for that, you're going to have to go. <laughs> Just as long as they don't have the belly fat ads. No belly fat ads. I'm I'm telling you, this is uh, <laughs> finally okay. I want you to go to <laughs> twit.hover.com. They have a new no-hold policy for customer service calls Monday through Friday, 9 to 8 p.m. Eastern. You're going to get somebody right away. That's ambitious. Yeah, no kidding. I have to say, you know, there's one of the registrars that I, you know, I, I've gone through a number. And uh, the one that I used for the big domain, for twit.tv, and we're moving everything over to Hover now, uh, has a really nasty thing that they do. They basically make your password stop working after uh, uh, five day, five mo five weeks or a, a months or something. So every time I log in, my password they say, "Oh, your account's been locked," so that you have to call a sales rep. That sucks. <laughs> and I just, it's like that was it. That was the last straw. Hey, this huh. does look like a very nice, clean yeah. site for you. Twit.hover.com. I'm really thrilled to get them on. We've been now, saying. Now, do I get the discount if I log into that site, or do I have to type in something extra? Uh, you know, that's a good question. Yeah, you use the code Twit. Okay. At checkout. So you don't have to go to twit.hover.com. You just go to hover.com if you want. Um, use the code TWIT. They do domain name registration, but they also have uh, uh, domain forwarding and a lot of other nice features. I always tell people, this is an example of why uh, what I'm talking about when I say control your, your name on the Internet. Get your, get your domain and own it. And you don't have to host a site or anything. Um, just get your name. You know, you've got scottborn.com. I don't have leolaporte.com, but I got, for my kids, I got abbylaporte and henrylaporte.com. And then you control it. That's what people are going to find. That's what you need to Does do. somebody else have leolaporte.com? Yeah. I Sue the too bastards. Long. Yeah, it's all right. I don't care. I got Leoville, and that's what I've used since 19, literally since 1995, something like that. Uh, twit, I'm not going to go on and on. Twit.hover.com, save 10%. Register I just your domain have name. a quick question and comment, though. Doesn't everybody agree this is what I think happens? When I go to the place with the race car girl and try to <laughs> register a domain, I swear to God, there's some little gremlin that as soon as I search for that name, goes, oh, that name's available, but it's $2,000. Oh, no, that, that's known. 
Yeah. That's yeah. known. As soon as you look for a name, they will they will basically reserve it. So don't go looking for names at these other guys because they will reserve that name and you won't be able to get it. If you're yeah. going to use the other guys, register that name. Do not go look for it. This is known. Not at Hover.com. It happened to me, I swear, the other day. It drives me crazy. I, I was I was like I, I I I checked who is and there was nothing there, so then I went over to the race car place and checked it and yep. then all of a sudden it was two thousand dollars. Yep, isn't I'm that like, interesting? This is, a, this is a scammeroni if I've isn't ever seen one. Isn't that interesting? I don't know how that happens, but I, I'm just saying it won't happen at Hover. Twit dot Hover H O V E R dot com. And we're really glad to welcome them to the uh, to the show. I've been looking for somebody that I could uh, feel comfortable doing ads for. We've actually turned down the other guys. Cleanliness is next to godliness. A number of times. I don't take ads from people I don't uh, trust and use. So here's an interesting counter to the argument that we've been having. Uh, I, I agree with you, Andy. It, it looked like Google was oversensitive and that was a sign of weakness. Now Steve Jobs is responding to Google's VP8 codec, WebM, saying, no, that's no good. It's going to be encumbered. Uh, we're sticking with H.264. You don't think that's the same kind of um, mm, oversensitivity? Not really. I mean, the VP8 was just not a very useful codec for anything that Apple's doing. Uh, the big advantage to it is simply that Google has supposed claims that they've bought all the patents and that they can release it license free. So if I wanted to do my own video streaming app and I did not want to work, not only not only pay the license fees for uh, uh, for 264, but also hopefully not worry that I'm going to get sued three years from now from a patent shark. That would be an interesting technology for me to adopt. There's already questions, though, as to whether or not Google actually owns all that stuff free and clear when they bought the company that uh, that put together that codec. Uh, there's, I mean, it's, you know, it's, I have to it's, say it's, it's, I, it's okay I, I, for web streaming, but that's about it. Those questions were raised by MPEG LA and Apple. Not by anybody else. That seems to me a very clear example of FUD. MPEG LA says, well, those may be encumbered. I think Google was very clear. We did the due diligence. We do not believe that VP8 is encumbered. We believe that we can make this royalty-free ar ar arrangement for all of you. They did this because Mozilla was not going to pick H.264 for HTML5. And wasn't, well, it doesn't support it. And so they, and, and I think that this is FUD coming from El Pelga LA saying, well, minute, well it might be encumbered. I think it's, well, I'll just, have you read just, the just, license, though? Well, What's the license? You've read the license, Scott? Of course I've you have. I've read the license. I'm the guy that reads all these licenses. Of course it's you have. Penny. If you sell 200 videos, here's what you owe. Are you ready? Two bucks. For MPEG LA. Yeah. Right now. It's, yeah. The but point I mean, is they own it. It's two bucks now. It's not two bucks 10 years but, from now. And they could pull it later on, and if at they, they want to get a new, if they want to get a new standard going, they wanted for to. For GIFs, GIFs, no, but you can, and that's why Ping came along. And this is the whole point. Nobody wants to, well, not nobody. Mozilla does not want to. Look, Microsoft can afford the fifteen million dollar license fee. Apple can afford the fifteen million dollar license fee. By the way, that's what they pay. I believe that's the amount they pay for the H.264 license. Uh, if you buy a commercial, a video camera, it says in the license you may not use this for commercial purposes. Because MPEG really? LA says you have yes, MPEG LA says you have to license it for commercial use. Wow. So the point is not that it's only two bucks right now, Scott. It's that that it is encumbered. It's owned by somebody, and there's no guarantee that it's going to stay that way. What we need is an unencumbered codec. Now I'm I'm not as I'm I'm sorry. I'm just I'm not as worried about now. stuff like this. I, I just you know they they've made it clear. If you look at the discussions from lawyers on this. The intent of these folks wasn't to go after me and you for selling 200 videos, Leo. And I, I just think it's, I think the FUD is, is that this, this open source uh, religion that everybody's got is, is I, I just don't believe in it. I think no, you, no, no, you, no, 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 that's not fair. That's like, no, no, that's a different issue. It's a different issue. It would be like saying, I'm going to donate this book to the library. And then the fifth person that, that takes it out decides that from now on, they get to charge when people take it out. It's, it has to stay free. Well, you're what saying, you're saying what it could happen, Merlin. I understand no, that. No, but, no, I'm, I'm describing to you because I think you misunderstand what open source means. I understand you don't like it, but you're not, but you're not portraying no, 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 fairly what it means. It's not that I don't like it. It's just that I don't see that there, ne there needs to be a religion about it. I mean, it's not a religion, it's, Scott. It's a problem. The problem is that open source, depending on what flavor of this you're doing, the commonality that all of them has is we don't introduce anything to this that will keep anybody in the future from keeping it free. And I, I, I don't, it doesn't matter whether you agree or not. I mean, it's just not fair to say that, that they're, they're balking because of, you know, they're balking because, well, you know, in the past, that's been the third rail. And if they, you discover something in there, that cascades down to everybody who's relied on that being free, especially well, if I, it's... I, I get your point. And I, I mean, maybe I misspoke, but the, the, my concern is, is that, you know, 
we, at least in America, we believe in free markets, <laughs> and I do think free markets can control this. I really do. I mean, they control. I, I mean, that's um, that's like saying you can use apples to start a car. I mean, it's an interesting idea, but it's not <laughs> the truth. The truth that yeah, capital. They're completely different things. People use open source source software inside of commercial stuff all the time. You just have to do it in a way that honors the license. The same way that you OS don't ten want people, is a good well, example well, of that. Scott, I mean, Scott, I mean, you seem like somebody who strikes me as as you like a having control over what is yours. And B, that if somebody, if you, if you decided that somebody can use it, like me, you want people to honor what you said is okay to do with it. And I think that's, that's the issue. And I don't want to go down a rat hole on open source or free software or whatever, but that's, that's the thing. Because, I mean, that, that, that poisons the well for everything that happens down the road. Look at Linksys. I mean, Linksys really took it up the behind because of not acknowledging that there was, um, I think it was... Uh, what's the one? What's the Stallman one? What's that license called? Free Software Foundation, the GNU. What's the one? GNU? What's the, what's the, the, the GNU. Yeah, GNU. GNU is a pretty tough license. I mean, you have to. Oh, just, yeah. you, you notice when you when you use anything that uses, I'm going to talk out of my butt a little bit. Uh, FM, FFmpeg, fantastic, crazy, complicated thing that you can use for doing pretty much anything to video. You'll notice that when you install most OS 10 apps, they'll say, "Okay, do you want to install the rest of the components that you need for this?" Because they can't touch each other, is my understanding. So, so like GNU in particular says, if anything touches this in a certain way, it it's you agreed when you put this together to that license. And as somebody who reads licenses, you would understand that, Scott. So, so it's just a matter. Well, I, of, I think I think maybe I maybe I said something you don't understand, or I said it wrong. And if I did, I apologize. No, what I what I'm trying to get at is, I don't think that it's a bad business model to not have something be open source. I, that's all I'm saying. No, no, I, it's I, a good I, business model <laughs> for the people who own the license. Nobody doubts that, Scott. My fear and, and, is... And, and, and my point is, is that if you, if you like a product that's not open source better than one that is, and you're willing to pay the penny a piece... You're right, and you should use it. And if the marketplace, if the marketplace decides it likes H.264 better, even if there's a free open source product out there, then H.264 will win. Here's the and issue for me, Scott. I'll, be, I'll give you the because I do have a dog in this hunt. We stream a lot of video. Uh, it's right. currently encoded H.264. Our partners pay those license fees. I don't have to pay any license fees. If those license fees went up steeply, I could be out of business. Now, you're, you're and, saying there's no reason for MPEG LA to do that. And you're probably right because they, they'd prefer to collect a penny from me, uh, you know, forever than a dollar once. And the way free markets work is that were they to dramatically raise the price, this would cause well, other developers to come Scott, in and offer alternatives. That's what's happening. Well, and if that's the case, then I'm willing to see how it all that's plays out. That's exactly what's happening. Google is saying, and this is, this is by the way, and, and Kara Schwisher in, uh, in All Things Digital uh, point, I kind of called him out on this, but one of the things Vic said, which was the most dramatic part of the Google I.O. speech, is if Google did not act, we faced a draconian future in which one oh, man, my. one company, <laughs> one device, <laughs> one carrier would be our only to choice. <laughs> we don't want a future like that. Now, that Unless is, it's them that's ruling. Well, it. and it might be hyperbole, <laughs> and it might be that that's what they're saying. Um, however, I, I think that that's the market coming out now with saying, Google's saying, no, we don't like the idea that uh, MPEG LA is, has like, it's the same thing happened, remember Scott, with uh, the the GIF format and Unisys. I do remember, I remember very much because, you know, I we was, were all using GIF. We were all using GIFs and there was this threat, we're going to pull right. GIFs from CompuServe and yada, yada. And and then what ended up happening was uh, the JPEG standards group ramped up what they were doing. And, and ping. So and ping and a bunch of other things. So I, I'm I'm happy for the open source solutions. I use some of them, but I I don't think that making for well, you use them every day. Commerce. I mean, yeah, that's I what your Mac is. I your understand Mac, that. That's what your Mac would run if it didn't have BSD. Right. But my but my point is, Merlin, making something evil because it's not open source <laughs> is an oversimplification. That's I don't think it, I don't think I don't think Merlin said. was saying that. Nobody I'm said not saying Merlin, I'm not saying Merlin said that. I'm just saying in general overall, people may say that. Right. In general, I see these arguments about the open source Ed, stuff. Edbot has a really good article uh, which I did not put in the rundown, but uh, somebody in the chat room just put uh, in our uh, show notes from ZDNet. H.264 patents. How much do they really cost? He says that there is a cap in place that guarantees rates won't go up more than 10 percent in the future, and this all expires in 2020. So maybe you're right, Scott, that there isn't that it is a that it is a moot point that there isn't going to be. An I issue. guarantee you, it's a moot point. Yeah. It's just it's made it's made it's become a political 
tool that people who have other agendas can use to advance those agendas. And the cost, by the way, not $15 million, but $5 million for Microsoft and Apple and other enterprises. That's the maximum annual royalty. More, more, more concerning to me are the taxes that that national governments put on these things, which is why you have these ridiculous time limits in the video camera recording, uh, because you have to pay a certain tax in Europe if you go over six minutes. Uh, the, right. These are the things where you, you want to talk about losing That's not control. Good either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You want to talk about losing control. Well, when the guys with guns put the, the, the rules out there, that's a little <laughs> bit different. Let me uh, let me let's change subjects and talk about Apple TV. I'm sorry, Google TV. I mean, so Apple. TV. I mean, oh no, no I'm I don't. Very I don't think Apple yeah. TV can be mentioned in the same sentence as Google TV because Google TV is actually an interesting, useful product. <laughs> Apple TV. Ooh. Steve Jobs has always said is a hobby, but I bet you every one of us has an Apple TV, and frankly, everybody who Bad. has, you got rid of it. You used to like that, didn't you? Marlon? I love it. Uh, yeah, I liked it. I liked it until like. I mean, yeah. I mean, I liked it. I liked it like if I had gotten a child's like toolbox with a plastic screwdriver, I think it was pretty cool. But then if somebody handed me an actual like a like an entire what, set of screwdrivers that actually did things. What do you use yeah. now? Mac Mini. Yeah, so you, you, you made your own home theater PC basically. And you I run Mac, what do you I run? XBMC, Plex, what do you run on top of that? I have Mac I have a Mac Mini. <laughs> <laughs> We have an Apple TV, but we uh, we actually leave it unplugged because we don't use it. So exactly, we just uh, it, we just watch everything on a MacBook Pro. Yeah, you know what? You're right. <laughs> exactly right. No, that, enough, that said, was, enough said. Enough said. It's Mac Mini. It's awesome. I, I, it's Mac. It was it was plugged into my it was plugged into my home theater system for like a long, long time. I think, and without really being used after after applying <laughs> yeah. OS updates, I unplugged it so I could take it along with me to give a talk and use it as a prop. And I just never bothered to plug it back in. It just, <laughs> you know what it was? I mean, for me, a, it was... a ninety nine ninety nine dollar Roku box does so much I more. Use and is so much more relevant yeah. to how I watch television and how I do video and even audio than than. And the Apple TV. This is the, the I totally agree with you. Oh, I, mean, I don't know that box in particular, Andy, but I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, we sent you the, one, didn't we? Send you one. Who, me? A Roku box? Yeah. No, no, I'll take it. Oh, uh, we sent everybody <laughs> else one. We'll send you one. Okay. I um no, but the thing was, well, here's here. This is a uh, because we're on Roku, just so that you know. I think this is an instance of one of the things Apple's usually a lot, lot, lot better at, and I, I couldn't begin to explain why this is, but you know, Apple wants to be the one that you use last, right? Apple wants you to go out and go, gosh, a phone will never be good. Whoa, I really like this iPhone. Uh, they want you to go out and go, God, this creative jukebox weighs 40 pounds. Whoa, my iPod's cool. They don't want you to go, hmm, this Apple TV stuff introduces me to stuff that would be really neat if it worked. Mm -hmm. And even, so basically, I, just super quickly, the, the stock, you know, basically Apple TV, in my opinion, is a device for buying things on iTunes. That's what they should just call it. I mean, the thing is, I ran AT, the ATV stick to basically get lots of cool stuff on there. And at one point I was using, I forget which app it was, but there was an app I was using that um, was the first app I had used where you could throw any kind of media, well, <laughs> MP4s after you'd spent hours <laughs> encoding them on your Mac, uh, only MP4s, I believe, for movies. And it would pull down all the metadata. It was super cool, but that broke in yeah. one release. And you know what I did? I discovered, at that point, I discovered XBMC. Then I discovered Boxy. Boxy, I still love, but it runs super hot on my machine, which is a crappy Mac Mini. And so I discovered things like, I think it's called VLC. Yeah, VLC. I've been using yeah. Movist. <laughs> what is it? Movist. VLC was crashing our MacBook Pro hard for a while, oh, really? so uh, we just switched I, I, I'm to Movist. Still discovering, I'm still discovering better. what VLC does. I had no idea. You can watch YouTube videos on VLC. I mean, if you go to the VLC wiki, it's crazy what you can do. You can watch with anything with VLC. We you can, can stream anything. it. You, you can, can actually watch us with VLC. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it, but no, this is, this is, this is, well, I'm sorry to, to derail M -O -V -I -S -T, this. M-O-V-I-S-T. I just want to, I'm curious now. Yeah. But this is one good example of where open source is, is clearly the winner because people are contributing stuff to this, modules to this, demuxing stuff for this that just takes it to another level to where you can point something at a stream and it'll turn it into like the right. TS folders of it. I mean, you can, if you go through that wizard, a lot of people just use it like they use iTunes. If you go to that wizard and if you go in and look at the advanced options in VLC, it'll curl your hair, man. It's crazy. We use it, I mean, to, we use it to convert video formats. Right. I still miss. I wish I Squint or similar would be updated. But I this love not having. I love not having to convert movies. It was crazy. Merlin, you should you should look at this Movist because it's based on QuickTime right and FFmpeg. It's on code.google.com slash p slash Movist. This is interesting, Adam. I hadn't. I wasn't. I should be reading tidbits more assiduously. Obviously. <laughs>
Uh, very <laughs> interesting. And it's it's free. It's open source. It's GPL. Yeah, very nice little app. Is it a player? It's mostly a player. I mean, basically, uh, you know, as I've... We are uh, not the uh, TV-involved people, and so we watch pretty much everything uh, ripped from DVD. Um, and, you know, all these other things have interfaces. Fact of the matter is, I'm a Mac guy. I want to double-click a file in the Finder. And hey. double-click file opens the Movist. <laughs> and it watch it. I like this guy, Leo. I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm done, I want to hit Command-Delete and have it go away. Mr. You'd be amazed what a Mac guy could do by learning just a little bit more. <laughs> You still do. You still do a lot of clicking, but you know what's really amazing? If you set up the right stuff, you don't even have to click. Oh wow! That's it just I'm plays. Saying. It knows what you want, and it I just don't plays. Know what it. I'm talking about, but I'm just saying. It's like there's just solutions out there. And when I talk to my clients about how the toothpaste is out of the tube, brother, I know what you're <laughs> talking about. I know what you're talking about. Makes a mess. I mean, that's. I'm not, now I'm not talking about Torrance. You're not talking <laughs> about Torrance, but something similar. I wouldn't know. All I know is that Merlin's <laughs> desktop. I have, I have a Mac Mini, and I love my family. <laughs> Merlin's desktop is completely blank, and yet he still manages to make things happen. I know. That's isn't that amazing? He doesn't double-click. Yeah, just, my bot, it, my, my, I do. It's true. I don't have to click. It's all command line foo for who? Ah, oh, XML. <sighs> so you think so. Uh, we didn't really talk about Google, Google TV. TV. Yep. Is this, uh, you know, initially the way we first heard the leaks were it was uh, Google search using a dish box. Now we know it's going to be Sony TVs in the fall. Logitech's going to make a Anything. box. Yeah, I mean... As usual, they're open source. They're open sourcing all the additions they've done for Google TV back into uh, the Android project. So anybody can port this to anything that they want. Uh, it is going. It, it's essentially the sort of thing where you press a button and you can either do Google search based on all TV listings, everything that's on your DVR. Uh, it will even extend to things that are on uh, streaming sites. So that if you do a search for House, it will show you the current episode that's airing right now. Push this to watch it right now, or the episode that's going to be airing on the USA Network on Friday. Push this to set the DVR to record. It, or here's an episode on Fox.com, and here's an episode you can buy uh, as a digital download. Like a TiVo, uh, also, like a TiVo, it just finds it for you. Well, well, but, but it finds it anywhere, yeah. which is what's but cool. Right, right. Exactly. That's, what That's so cool. Or, you don't have to go like oh seven o'clock on Friday or whatever. It'll but find you it type. Well, the right. example they exactly. used on stage was you type house. It not only finds it on the cable, but it also finds it on Hulu. Oh man! And, and you know, frankly, I don't see any reason why it couldn't also find it on BitTorrent at some point. Because it's no, extensible. It is, let's see how committed they are to being open when they're so <laughs> the first plug in. Um, also, also, it has a full Chrome browser, so anything you want to do to search, you can do it. It'll do picture in picture. They're also releasing uh -huh. some hooks, so the APIs, so that if, uh, if like a, a, a MLB or the NFL.com site wants to interact with your TV in a, in a meaningful way, like not only show you here the next, here the Red Sox's next uh, 10 games, but oh, well, here's what times they're airing. Click on these things to automatically set your DVR to program them. They can do that. Also, you can have third party apps. Uh, you got the Netflix app running on it. Also, it runs every existing Android Marketplace app. So they just simply downloaded the they existing showed Pandora, which was amazing. Existing Pandora yeah, app. Yeah. So and and it'll either be hardwired into your Blu-ray player, your TV set, or you can buy a set-top box uh, to get it going. And they it talks to your Android ha handset, or if you had a tablet. I mean, this is this is going to be a, a they, they killer. Have, they already have they already have an Android app for it that will let you control it. You know, with any with any Android device. Uh, Google yeah. told me that night that they are also going to be d uh, releasing an iPhone edition. Of that same app, oh, interesting. but again, all this is open <laughs> APIs, so that if you wanted to write your own iPad app uh, for Google TV, you could certainly do it. The only thing you really take, can't do. With, will, go ahead. Will it take four minutes to start up like my Android phone? <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not. It was actually very sprightly in the demo. I haven't seen it actually in, in live deployment yet, but it's actually very sprightly. I mean, I, I think that this is sort of though the. The, the quintessential, really cool Google release, like uh, like Google Wave, where it's a great demo and it gets you all excited. And wow, that's great. It's all open so anybody can incorporate this really cool idea. And then two years ago, two, two years later, when I write about it, I have to start off by reminding people what Google Air is uh, before yeah. telling them that, oh, they've actually opened it wide. It looks like the sort of thing where if, if it's one of those features that they don't even have to promote as being part of the Sony uh, TV or part of the Toshiba, whatever, it's just something that, oh, by the mm -hmm. way, this is, there's mm -hmm. also, it also has Google TV wired in. Then they can have some success with it, but I'm not sure if they're going to succeed in getting millions of consumers to be excited about paying a little bit extra for it. I tried to get pricing. They haven't announced pricing, either Sony or Logitech, on how much these are going to be. Google told me that they're, they, they anticipate that's going to be a this is something that's, that's going to be wired into the premium devices in a product lineup. So it's not as though the the $120 Blu-ray player that you buy at Kmart is going to have <laughs> this. 
but the two hundred thirty one the two hundred thirty dollar model might have it built in, just like the two hundred thirty dollar model has says Netflix. As long as you don't have to wear goggles to use it. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> I'm not wearing no goggles. Google goggles. Steampunk, steampunk goggles. <laughs> I only wear them because it makes me look awesome. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> my, my reaction to this was just, it's just yet another, and I, I was kind of underwhelmed, but I'll, I'll wait and see. And, of course, I'll, I'll be very interested to see what they do with it. But, you know, you could do some of the same things with TiVo right now, Boxy, and the Boxy box will TiVo, be out soon. TiVo's got all of that. That's where I watch your show, this no, thing. No, I mean, like, yeah, but the interface... Uh, Right. Exactly. I mean, Google TV doesn't cost you twelve bucks a month forever, uh, and well, we don't if, know if, that if, yet. That yeah, we don't uh, know that. Well, yet. no, no. Well, the Google Google says that that's not a pay service, or at least that's what they told me. But but the but the thing is, Google's probably not doing anything. They're offering this code to companies who will then make something which may be paid service. We don't know what Sony's going to do. We don't know what Logitech's going to do. Uh, is Google okay. the back end? It's for, well, no. All they all all it is is it's software. Hardware with the, all all it is, it's an Android inside the box. Essentially, the box is just a Google computer, a, a, a an Android based computer with an Atom processor that has a small amount of flash storage built into it, has Wi Fi built into it, and has an Ethernet jack I built see. into so it. So it's it's as far it's talking uh, to the web. Exactly. As far okay. as far as I understand the architecture, and again, I only had about a twenty to thirty minute conversation with Google uh, Thursday night, like the the day after the keynote. As far as I understand, it is essentially just an invisible little computer that doesn't need to call into the mothership in order to set up an account or or, or get you going. Right. It is an independent computer that simply works. So, I don't know. If, I don't know if Sony would even have the ability to say to turn on your Google feature. It right. only costs thirty dollars for the, the additional right. Dish package. Right. Uh, although that is that is sort of interesting. They have a they have a very close relationship with the Dish network, but that's not uh, a case of they. Uh, it's like a value added service. One of the other thing open things they did to sort of get Google TV pushed forward was to create an open uh, IP standard so that if a Google TV box wants to communicate with a DVR or any other piece of hardware, here is a protocol for doing that. So if Motorola or anybody wanted to develop a, co a, a cable box that could be controlled by the Google TV. And by that, I mean set a DVR recording, change channels, that sort of thing. Uh, supposedly, they could just simply uh, support this open standard because everything's being open source. But let's you know, tune back in a year from now to find out if anything, any part of this works. We're going to take a break. I want to come back and talk about a number of other stories. We'll do our lightning round where we give you a bunch of stories and I'll uh, ask the panel's uh, reaction to it. Andy Anako is with us from the Chicago Sun-Times from 43folders.com. Merlin Mann from uh, scottborn.com, the great Scott Bourne, back with us again in the pink, looking good. And uh, Adam Engst of the 20-year-old tidbits, T-I-D-B-I-T-S.com. <laughs> wow. Congratulations there. Back when the Beatles were still together. That's how old these are. Well, you know what else is, You know what? I thought it was blonde. Okay. You know what else? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, That's the eyesight. Point. You look blonde. You look blonde. Uh, you know what else is exactly 20 years old? Your, your anniversary was last month. This month is Windows 3.0. So you're a little older than Windows 3.0. And it's still 18% of the Windows market. <laughs> I remember talking to Steve Jobs, and he said that's when Microsoft started to lap us. We had a 10-year advance, and uh, you know, and we came out in 84. But by uh, uh, 94, we were, we were in trouble because Windows 3.0 started to lap us. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe you'll start lapping. Who could you lap yeah, the, the main people who are old, actually, the only people I know who are older than we are is the Irish Immigrant News. <laughs> uh, You're lapping the Irish Immigrant News. Congratulations. So they just keep going. I mean, they keep putting out all that news from Ireland. <laughs> they, 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 they're, a bit, you know, like nine months or a year older than us. And, you know, I mean, I don't wish them any ill, but gee, it'd be nice to stop being <laughs> second oldest. <laughs> the second oldest net newsletter. All right, we're going to take a break, come back and talk more with our great panel. But I want to tell you about Gazelle. Don't sell it. Gazelle it. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot com. Now, i got to tell you, there's new hardware coming out all the time, like a new iPhone. I just want you, you may not, you know, you may be thinking, can I afford this new iPhone? And let me just tell you what happened last time when the 3GS came out. A lot of people said, I've got to have the 3GS. They put their old iPhone, the 3G, on Gazelle. They sent it to Gazelle, got their 200 bucks, and it was a push. They were able to upgrade for nothing. We'll see what happens when the 3GS comes out. But if, you're, if your gear is in good shape, you're going to get the best price at Gazelle.com. Go right now to Gazelle.com and just type in an object, something you're ready to sell, something you don't need anymore. 
You know, uh, uh, Leo, I've got a, a iPhone vest. I wonder if they your vest might be uh, might be very <laughs> valuable to them. They'll tell you the price. You tell them the condition, what you've got. They'll tell you the price. They send you the box. In most cases, postage paid, and uh, and then you send it into them. You actually should fill the box with a bunch of junk. Most of us have a bunch of junk. And and uh, once you get Gizel gets your gadget, you get paid. If you don't like the price, they'll send it back to you at their cost. And by the way, you can select the payment method you want, payment, PayPal, check, or an Amazon or Walmart gift card, and you get a 5% bonus with the Amazon gift card. Or, and I really like this, you can donate the value of your gadget to charity. In fact, Gazelle has great charity pages, too. If you've got an event coming up, don't have a bake sale, have a Gazelle sale. Just ask the parents of the soccer team or, or, the, uh, or the club members to go to gazelle.com, your special page on there, and... Uh, donate their old used gadgets to the group the prices are kind of interesting kindles and nooks about a hundred dollars great way to get a new ipad right iphones about four hundred dollars in some cases if they're in good shape macbooks six hundred dollars check out the rates yourself quotes vary by model so make sure you put the right model in there and to get full value you want to send in the battery and the power cord if you have them you don't have much choice in the ipod and the iphone and uh and and if you tell them the condition they'll give you an accurate quote Sometimes this is a great idea. Isn't it a great idea? I love this site. Go to Gazelle, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot com. By the way, if it is something that they cannot resell, if it's something that's so old, don't hesitate to even do that stuff in the box because they do responsible recycling. They use uh, green recyclers. They don't ship it to China where some poor kid has to you know, put up with the environmental nightmare. They have a no export policy, a no landfill policy. They uh, Their recycling partners have uh, are recognized by the EPA, have a documented environmental management system, are independently audited. audited. Right now they use Cloud Blue as their primarily, primary recycling partner. Uh, really, uh, this is a great company. They've been around since 2006. They have a gadget lab team that hand inspects every device. And by the way, if you're sending them a netbook or a device with a hard drive, they wipe the personal data before it's reused, resold, or recycled. So this is a Who great... Who are they reselling to? Um, a lot of it they do on eBay. So they they have they're an eBay big power seller on eBay. So a lot of it's through eBay, um, other sources as well, and they recycle. They're I, they're a really neat group. You know, you could you could do it yourself on eBay if you want to put up with the hassle. But this is this is going to get you most of the same amount of money with a lot less hassle. They're really a great a great group. G we've sold a lot of stuff through them now, and, and I can tell you I've been very happy with the results. G a z e l l e dot com. Don't sell it. Gazelle it. Have fun, too. It's a fun site to go and put in stuff and see how much it's worth. They can send a freight truck to my office. I'm thinking you're, you're a perfect Gazelle customer, Scott Bourne. Well, I'm going to try. I'm going to use this. This has been the most profitable uh, Mac Break Weekly I've ever been on. <laughs> Just think what that I vest 16, could... <laughs> I have 16 8-gigabyte 2G iPhones from the old days in the office to well, get rid of. I'll tell you, I, I was talking to the, uh, the founder of Gazelle, or actually was their CTO uh, the other day. We, we went to dinner or lunch, and uh, he said, it, you know, the I, when the iPhones come out, usually in June, very get very busy because a lot of iPhone users want the new iPhone. And generally, you're going to get the money, you know, that you're going to pay for the new iPhone back, if not more, if it's in good condition. You know, if you haven't broken, my son's not going to get any money for his iPhone, but <laughs> the screen is all shattered and everything. Um, so it's a really, it's a great way to upgrade your, your gadgets. Uh, a couple of very, now we'll go through some very quick ones. Market cap, Apple is now within striking distance of Microsoft. Its market cap has been going up and up and up. Scott Bourne, you're our market analyst. You, you, you got out of Apple because you had to. Yeah. Are you sad now? Yeah. 250 bucks now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, I, I was uh, pretty happy to sell at 200 which was at that time the... You, you predicted know. 200 I predicted 200. I sold at 200. I made a bunch of money. Now it's 250. And if you look at, you know, the, I, I'm a simple guy. Let me look at the P&E ratio and let me look at the cash on hand. And I can tell you a lot about company. And uh, looking at 100 companies, the P&E ratio and the cash on hand for Apple is about as good as it gets, baby. Uh, when uh, when Apple passed Dell a few months ago in market cap, Steve Jobs sent an email to employees says, "Team." Turned out Michael Dell wasn't perfect at predicting the future. Remember, Michael Dell said, uh, I can't remember what the stock price was, but he said everybody should, they should just sell Apple off for parts. 
Based on today's stock market close, Steve says, Apple's worth more than Dell. Stocks go up and down and things may be different tomorrow, but I thought it was worth a moment of reflection today. Perhaps you could buy Dell with cash. <laughs> they could, couldn't they? Market yeah. cap approaching $2 trillion. Uh, I think that's right. $227.46 billion. And what's very significant is... So no, it's not $2 trillion. It's $227 the number of mobile devices to max that create that number. Yeah, no kidding. Exxon is number one, two hundred sixty-four billion. Microsoft two hundred thirty-two billion. Apple currently at around two hundred twenty-seven billion market cap. Then Walmart and Google. Google, by the way, is only one hundred fifty-four. So look at the cash on hand now for those. Companies. What is what is what is what is Apple's cash on hand? So it's over thirty billion. It's a bunch. Billion. It's a bunch. It's, 40, it's a bunch. over forty now. Jeez. Yeah, the, the, that changes the dynamic significantly. Then look at their price yeah. earnings ratio. I mean, right. this is a very healthy company with plenty of room to grow. I wouldn't be shocked if we saw a 300 or a split. <laughs> Somebody in the chat room said, Apple just popped a market cap in Google's <laughs> butt. <laughs> <laughs> 97 bucks, you can buy a 3GS at Walmart now. That's incredible. Well, because you know it why. Two dollars is two dollars less than what it's expected to be other where, other places. Right. right? It'll be a hundred bucks next month after the three G, four G, whatever right. it's going to be. I called. thought that sounded pretty amazing too, and then I heard, well, it's just two bucks less than it'll be. <laughs> but it's cheap now. It, it worked. Yeah. It worked though, Merle, and it got me to think it was cheap. It's cheap now because uh, totally. I think it's fantastic. I mean, that's a. Is this the three GS? Three GS. That's what I got. It's a hell of a phone. Yeah. I've got. Is it thirty two gig? Is there someone? Probably, Is that right? Probably not. I paid I too know. much for this phone, Leo Laporte. <laughs> Will you buy a 4G? Who, who's going to... You're all going to buy a 4G, of course. <laughs> Jeez Louise, what am I even asking? Of course, Andy, Andy you've already got about. yours. He's got his. We know that. Andy's probably got one under his hat. That's what's behind the black <laughs> curtain. Uh-oh. <laughs> he's a Nexus One. He's showing a Nexus One. Did you switch off the iPhone to a, to a, to a Google phone, Andy? Oh, look, he's got the Apple logo on it. <laughs> I saw that earlier and wondered, what the heck is that? Andy, we can't hear your voice. I don't know if it's because you're, you're doing that thing that you do where you're pretending. No, the, 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 uh, the Google logo kind of pained me after I got that <laughs> Wi-Fi <laughs> sharing turned on. So I Andy, for those of so. you at home, Andy is holding up a Google phone with a big-ass Apple logo. <laughs> where, it, where it would normally say Google. What else have you done? How else have you customized it? Do you have Apple wallpaper? Uh, no, what, what I've done is, hang on, let me... Dip, dip back. I have taken the I've taken the step of uh, changing the home screen so it has the exact same layout of applications as what I'm used <laughs> to on my iPhone. So the camera app is where I expect it to be. The browser, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. movie player, everything is where I expect them to be. You don't use uh, widgets then? Oh yeah, you've got a widget on there. Yeah, I, I use. Uh, see, th this is this is the, the this is the limitation of uh, uh, of, of Google. They, they have really good ideas for widgets and things like that. What they should do is they the, the last thing they do they should do before any company releases a Google phone uh, or if they release like a, a gold master of the operating system is to simply give it to no more than a room full of no more than three Google employees whose job it is to take this phone, set it up the way that they themselves would agree would, uh, a human would like to use it, and then simply lock it down saying when you install this operating system, this is what the app, this is the this is the layout of the applications. This is when you go like this here is where here are the three widgets that are going to be on that one page for we'll give a, a search page we'll have a map page we'll have an, a messaging uh, widget all on the same page it really does take a couple of weeks before you have you feel as though you're really moved into an android phone <laughs> this and that's is, one of the i'm limitations. sorry but that's stockholm syndrome andy you've been in the <laughs> apple world so long you want google to tell you how to lay no, your no. phone out no 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 i just it's 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 like you know when you pick up your new car at the dealership you drive it off the lot and it's the seats are adjusted perfectly and the there are things programmed to the radio stations but when it comes to the dealer lot there's it's wrapped in plastic and there are things all over the seats and the seats are like down at down the black position this is the difference between a company that understands that they are not shipping a product they're actually delivering a product to, to actual users and so if, if, and if my if, my layout looks different from your layout and i'm sure it looks different from everybody else's oh layout. so your layout sucks okay <laughs> by the <laughs> way <laughs> by the so way awesome. I can't wait. I'm going to get the HTC Evo sometime in the next couple of weeks, and I think that, that is going to even be more amazing. And they do, by the way, 
Andy, that this is the Google experience, which you get on a Droid or a, a, a Nexus One. But if you get the HTC Evo or a number of other HTC handsets, HTC does exactly what you're talking about. They have kind of a exactly. setup, a default setup, and it's it's very beautiful and very nice. I have a I have my review to plug the Sun Time side again. Uh, I did the print version of my HTC Incredible review last week. That's the short 600 word, or the longer version is hitting the Sun Times site this week, and really half of it is the difference between what Google thinks users want a phone to be and what HTC right. thinks because they package this new UI package called Sense that keeps getting better and better and more and more impressive with each iteration. I think there's a, it's almost as if the, a stock Google phone and an HTC phone with the Sense UI, it's almost like they're two completely different products. I, I, I like I, the choice, though. Exactly. I, I like the choice, but I mean, it really does elevate it to a new to a new level. If you've not used an Android phone since you know the the G1, the, if I, if someone shows you an HTC phone with Sense, you're like, oh, I didn't realize it was this good. Yeah. No, I haven't used an iPhone since since I got the Nexus One. I've been very very happy. Really? Oh yeah. Really? Wow. Oh yeah. Now, but, I, but I have an iPad, so I have the I, iPhone I know, experience. But, but do you find that it doesn't it drive you crazy that you turn it on and you have to wait and wait? I don't wait. shut my phone off that often. Okay. You shut it I off every night? Yeah. yeah, I shut mine off. And I it takes forever. Actually, I could cook breakfast actually power before it off? the thing starts. He apparently, it powers it off. I have, I, that's powers that's an off. alien experience to me, friend. And, and, and? Well, my, it is my backup phone. I have to tell it to turn off three times. I turn it off and it says, do you want to turn it off? I hit it, yes, I want to turn it off. Do you really want to turn it off? I hit yes. I, you know, that's how about this and all? <laughs> Leave it on. <laughs> It's Linux. I can feel you can leave my it mind on. going. <laughs> my name is. It's like trying to quit a Facebook account, all right? <laughs> uh, answer. What do you think? I don't know if I haven't covered this story because I don't know if there's anything to say, but I, I'm going to bring it up. We've got a really esteemed panel here: Foxconn and the suicides. There is there a story there? What is? Oh, it's, it's it like Foxconn has how, how many hundreds of thousands of people work at Foxconn? There are nine deaths in the last six months, which is a great jump from last year. Okay, but the the, the, the question is that if we have a business, isn't it something like a half a million people who it's work huge. there? It's huge. Okay, so if you have any any that's that's an entire industry of employees. If we look at the auto industry. If we look at the drug industry. If we look at the at the Martha Stewart living manufacturing industry, how many suicides are there every year? I'm guess I'm guessing Martha Stewart's people kill themselves a lot more a lot faster. <laughs> than folks who put together iPads. There are eight. I like eight, this. I like this. Andy. Eight hundred thousand. There are eight hundred thousand employees. So if you say there were eleven suicides sides in San Francisco in the ni last exactly. nine months, which is the same size. Nobody, everybody would say, no. yeah. So it's the size of a lot of a city. It's a medium, it's a medium sized city. More However, jump off the Golden Gate Bridge than that. No, in fact, that's true. There's, it's more than one. A, I think it's one, one a month. month. One yeah. A month. So it's 12 yeah, a year. That's, that's more, that's more than. Ed, well, what's Ed the Fox? trend line? What's the trend line now? I mean, it, it is going up. And I think that the, there's some thought that maybe it's a very stressful place to work. Does Apple have some responsibility for that? I don't know. We, I Ever since we, they took the pepperoni pizza out of the cafeteria, things have gone down. <laughs> Let me down. ask you, Mr. Capitalist Scott Bourne. <laughs> too, soon, ask you, too soon. Okay. Too soon. Let me ask you, Scott Bourne, Mr. Capitalist. Do we, as consumers, have any bear any responsibility for the fact that we demand cheaper and cheaper products, and as a result, we are pushing manufacture offshore to places where there uh, are fewer, you know, labor laws and prices are, you know, cost of labor is way lower. Don't well, we I, bear I some it, of that responsibility? We do share that responsibility as consumers. I think it's horrible. And uh, the, the markets always deal with these issues themselves. Again, I trust markets. And, uh, and here's, here's why. Because, you know, there are people like there's a grocery store in Gig Harbor that's not affiliated with national chains. It's not even a Whole Foods, but it's Whole Foods-like. And everything's local produce. It's grown by farmers. And I pay like four bucks for a carton of eggs, but they're really good eggs and there's nothing, you know, nothing injected into them. And so there's a bounce back in the market with me rebelling against yeah. the mass produced stuff for cheap. And there are always people that are going to rather, you know, pay for quality. And if enough of that happens, then things change. But look at the airline industry where we see that people don't care about quality. They just want the cheapest airline seat they can get. And if the plane crashes every once in a while, they'll live with it. I mean, you're right. We do we do bear responsibility. Well, Hopefully, markets will sort it out. The, at least what economists would say is is that when you push jobs offshore, that um, you know they may not have the same level of working conditions and environmental regulations and whatnot, but that it's better than what those people would have been doing otherwise. 
and that people in those countries want those jobs because they are a step up from what they would have had previously. Um, I mean, I do think that there are pl plenty of room for problems there. And Apple actually has a really fairly um, detailed document uh, about what they expect from their suppliers and uh, audit trails of what they go in and check to see what their suppliers are doing. So, you know, uh, maybe other companies have that too, but I certainly haven't seen it uh, publicized widely from other companies, whereas Apple makes that stuff relatively public. All right, lightning round. We're going to continue on. Apple's selling more iPads than Macs, at least according to RBC Capital <laughs> Markets analyst Mike Abramsky, who upgraded his predictions from 5 million in the first year to 8 million iPads. He says Apple's selling more than 200,000 iPads a week. That means they're outpacing the sales of Macs in the United States, closing in on iPhone sales. No question, the iPad's a huge success. 3G still sold out, isn't it, in, in many stores? Week-long week, week long wait in three cities we contacted this week, Detroit, Seattle, and um, I believe it was Miami. I do have to say, though, that, that uh, I, I think, Andy, what, what you said at the beginning of the show is frankly the case, which is it's the form factor that wins. If you get, uh, I think, I don't think you're going to see uh, success with Windows or maybe, or Linux, yeah, but I well, think you, you, you put another mobile operating system on a device of this caliber, it's going to sell well, too, yes? Yeah, I, I think that Apple's biggest problem over the next six months uh, is going to be to make sure that there are enough applications in the App Store right now that emphatically make the case that the iPad apps are superior in every way to any Android tablet apps that come across. They have uh, to. Because that's, yeah, because otherwise, otherwise I, again, the, the it hasn't the, uh, the iPad hasn't really won yet. It's the only game. It's the only game in town for this sort of device. Just like there was a time where there was no other music right. player on the market, there was no no other smartphone like the iPhone on the market. Is it the form factor? Is it the shape? Is it the price? Or is it the fact that Apple has done something special with these ingredients and done them in a special way? We don't know that yet. The law prohibits prohibits uh, members of Congress from bringing an iPad onto the House floor. However. <laughs> <laughs> too, that's, that's for safety gaming. reasons right yeah <laughs> <laughs> no tweeting allowed i don't know i kind of i've kind of uh, torn about that on the one i mean at, on the one hand there's a real value to having all the documents put you have your staffers put everything on here instead of the big piles of books they're carrying but i also don't want uh my member of congress playing we rule while <laughs> while there's something well, important never, going you, on yeah you, you, you never know if you, you want them to be oh, so they're browsing porn and, and you know it <laughs> <laughs> in any event, a number of members of Congress, Claire McCaskill of Missouri, Cliff uh, Steams, I'm sorry, Stearns of uh, Florida, uh, Jeff Flake of Arizona, all have iPads. They're proudly showing off. Daryl Issa, uh, Stephen, who's a, from who's from uh, California, Stephen Lynch of Massachusetts, replaced their orders. And uh, I'm surprised Zoe Lofgren, who is the member of Congress for the District of Apple, does not have one yet. <laughs> They have their own oh, constituency the now. The District of That's Apple. The, the District of Apple. That's the... <laughs> I, I think this sounds like the same kind of thing as like, you know, I, I, this, you know, you get to a certain age and you read enough and you start seeing patterns everywhere. And I, this is the same thing that happens all the time with any new technology. They used to think pregnant ladies shouldn't ride on trains. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, if it's true. The swing go, if the swing goes over the top, you'll turn inside out. It's, you know. <laughs> I thought it was yeah, interesting. It, seem to be a, it seems to be an automatic reaction. Any, any kind of new technology right. must be dangerous. No, nah, don't allow that on the house floor. Well, you can't, bring any, you can't bring a computer on the house floor either. You can bring an iPhone on the house floor. Well, then you should can't. be able to bring an iPad. Yeah, come on. I, this, see, this is just, you know, this is security theater. You know, it, it's, it's like, it, it, it's... <laughs> I mean, I, I'm serious. It's security theater. I remember, you know, back in the day, I was coming out of out of uh, the the mess hall there at uh, at Fort Knox, and they were searching everybody to make sure they didn't bring food back to the barracks. So, <laughs> what they did was the, the DI. The, the DI absolutely hated my guts. So what they would do is have me wear an overstuffed coat. I would walk out of the mess hall. They would immediately search me. And then the guys that were smuggling burritos back to <laughs> our barracks were getting a free pass. And then I got half the cut for being the draw. And that's and where your troubles began, Scott. That's it. So what I'm saying here is that 
This stuff never works. If there, I mean, if there's a security problem or a, a problem related to the iPad, it's just it's all security theater. They'll find some other way to do it. One of it's our totally is trying to like solve, and this is a big I thing. I think in my they're trying to preserve the collegial environment at, where people talk eye they're to eye. They're trying to solve the to problem face. that they see and not the real <laughs> problem. I mean, the the problem, as I tell my clients, the real problem behind every problem is trying to make people be a great human being. And, and and any time, and they can't do that. You can't right. make laws about that. And Too so bad. you end up yep. doing all these squirrely things to try and make people behave differently by basically, you know, you come up with these contrivances that any junior high school kid could, could route around, you know, and I don't know. The, the other thing, Scott, is I recently joined a men's choir called the Burrito Smugglers. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's the same kind of thing. I saw the ad for, uh, for that on the uh, That's right. We're going to do, do, yeah. uh, uh, do uh, mostly Mozart, and uh, we're doing a little Sondheim review. Well, listen. And, I I I came to one of uh, one of your performances in the past. Oh, if you make thank if you. you do another one, I'll be there. All right. Help me on a <laughs> Sunday, please. <sighs> Apple relents and allows cash for iPads. We had a story last week that a lady tried to buy an iPad with a wad of cash and was turned down. They said you have to use a credit card. Now they say, no, you can pay for cash, but you will have to set up a traceable Apple account so that we know who you are. Well, I was talking to a guy at the Syracuse Max uh, Apple Store, a uh, local user, user group meeting, and he said they were doing it purely because they had people coming up from New York City who were just buying them out. The city they, slickers. They they're coming yeah, in, they're they, buying them out. Well, they'd come up, they'd buy them out, they'd come, go home, and then they'd ship them overseas where you couldn't get them yet. And so basically, we think they're Apple giving said, them to aliens. <laughs> Worse, so they were they were trying to lock it down a little, so they actually had some in stock for the real customers. Right. No, I they think did the same thing with the iPhone, where you had to buy and ca pay cash. Yeah, <laughs> iTunes share of the U.S. music market swells. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. The, the the unofficial Apple weblog really knows how to write a headline. Yeah. It swells. It's turgid to twenty <laughs> big burrito <laughs> to twenty six point <laughs> seven percent. Uh, that is now We're of course, the show for a new demographic. I okay. think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, the, it's the midnight show, Andy. It's the burrito <laughs> it's, it's, smugglers. It's Sex in the city two is coming out this week. You know, you gotta go with the ad dollars are. I perfectly am on board with this. I'm taking that night off. My wife has got a group of ladies. They're all going to see the midnight <laughs> get hotel, show. Get a hotel room, run away. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't want to be home. Um, Apple a lot of airbrushing. There's a lot of airbrushing on that poster. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that, that, that you, you transition from airbrushing into CGI. That was it's true. They, if, if if those women were at that photo shoot, they're wearing those body suits with the ping pong balls so they can remap. Kim Cattrall is deep in the uncanny valley at this point. <laughs> The, the ILM budget for this movie topped $1 billion. That's what I heard. She looked more human when she played a Vulcan. Hey! Okay. <laughs> hey, I got another one. She's fighting Yoda with a lightsaber. AT&T. Hey, anyway. this, this should have. We should have led with this story. AT&T wants to know. raise the early termination fee for the iPhone and other smartphones. Was $175. You get out of your contract before the two years are up, ladies and gentlemen. When you buy your new 4G, you will be paying $325. Dollars because AT and T loves you, sons of beaches. You know, I want to have a business where you're compelled to buy from me. Yeah, that is the. Ultimate <laughs> I often said that. What if the dry cleaner in the corner idea. said, "Oh, you're moved to another dry cleaner. That'll be 150 bucks early yeah. termination fee." We gave you a plastic bag. That's, yeah, that's you owe that's, us. That's a that's a lot of buttons to push on the console to terminate the contract, okay? We need to contact them and find out how much does it really cost. There could be a lot of charges that they're they are eating, okay, Leo? They're eating these costs of tapping the button like 11 times to say, no, he's no longer a subscriber, okay? That, where that where like is the FCC in all of this? That's what I want you know, to know. Th that, that is something to bring up. I mean, this, this could be iPads. regulated if there are enough complaints. <laughs> well, the FCC supposedly was investigating this a year ago. The Congress was made a big deal about it a year ago. I don't know. Apparently nothing's happened. Uh, AT&T Mobility CEO Ralph De La Vega said his company does not expect many iPhone customers to jump ship once AT&T loses exclusivity. Uh, no, at $325, I expect you're right. <laughs> 
Do you think that's what this this is all about? Well, they're taking the Facebook approach. You don't have to buy an iPhone. You don't have to buy from us. Well, and if you look at the press release, it's actually really funny because they say some prices will be lower, and then the few paragraphs down, oh, the smartphone prices three twenty five. Yeah. But if you got yeah, a basic yeah, phone, I learned it's a phrase for this, Adam. Contract. What's the phrase? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I um, I've learned the phrase for this. It's called a feature phone. That's the new term. <laughs> yes, it's a feature phone. Isn't that funny? So because it has the features, clients, and they were talking about blah blah blah, talking about the you know the feature phones, and I was like, I know what a smartphone is. What's a feature phone? And like ah, anything, it's one of those phones that nobody uses. Anything anymore. else? <laughs> anything else but a smartphone? A teenage girl phone. And I, it's you sad. Know, I, think, I think some of this came from a place that is actually, if not fair and logical is at least sensible. So you look at places like what? Again, I'm going to pull this out of my ass. But like things like MCI, Sprint, you look at cable companies. These people spent a lot on infrastructure in the 70s and 80s. They put a lot of cable in the ground. And then suddenly they woke up one morning and it wasn't as valuable as it used to be. You think about all the money that went into long distance companies and stuff like that. And so I think the idea is that, that, that people said, you know, no more. It isn't just you're going to like be able to get away from this so quick. We need to amortize the investment we put into this. And I think at first, probably, I'm guessing, people felt like they were entitled by saying, hey, look, you, you're a customer that enjoys that hearing the pin drop. You got to stay with us. Do you know what I mean? It's just that now the trouble is with stuff like cable and AT&T in particular, Comcast and AT AT&T, sorry, two companies I've got to bring up, is, is that it's not like they're providing great service. It's that lock-in is so galling because right. to, to quote my friend yeah. Marco, I mean, they clearly, they despise their own customers. Right. It's, it's, you know, it's, Merlin, it's you, really, you know, it's not, AT&T really does have a, a good customer service model. We're not happy till you're not happy. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> they're self-loathing monopolists and, uh, and I feel for them. It's not easy. It is weird though. I mean, again, I'm, I'm reaching a point in life where I'm trying not to over-dramatize and trying to over-mythologize things, but it is, you see certain, you run into people like, uh, like the woman I ran into at the uh, copy center at the office depot on the corner of Sixth and Washington in Portland, Oregon. I will never forget you. Um, <laughs> You run into these people where you're like, you're just a sad tomato, right? You're just like, you're, why are you in a business where you're trying to help people with a thing when you clearly hate life? And with AT&T, it really sometimes feels like, wow, you, got, you have got the world on a string. You could build a relationship where nobody would want to get away from you. Instead, you got this totally crap service with the greatest phone in the world. <laughs> and then if we try to do anything with you, like it costs money and you treat us, you treat us like a redheaded stepchild. I just, I guess what I'm getting at is like, it just seems like there's such a pattern for, for trying not to do that deliberately. That, that it's, it's almost like a dare. It's like a dare to go try and, and find someplace else. And I've done it. I bought my way out of Sprint happily. I was like, I was, I've been with them for 10 years. I've never been treated so you know, badly. No, I think they're all suck, though. Life. I mean, Verizon, by the way, early termination is the same as they raised theirs months they, ago. They so. all they, suck. They do. That's an important they, they, point. They, they do it because it works. Why, if I want to yep. withdraw 20 bucks from an ATM, why is the why is the other bank's ATM charging me a 12% right. big right. on the money I'm withdrawing? Not because yeah. they're evil, but because, hey, if we have that rate, most people will not bother to walk three blocks away to find a Bank of America or, or, a, uh, or TSI uh, ATM in order to get that done. The this one thing is why I will I think we say, though, back to we give AT&T a bad rap, but some cases, they're not that terrible. I mean, look at the iPad rate. <laughs> there's example. A, that's there's their new commercial. I can see it now. In some cases, we're not that terrible. Their iPad there's rate is so this. low because you can't use it on anything but an iPad, right? Well, but you look at the iPad rates anywhere else in the world, they're way higher. You look at the roaming rates from just about anyone else, they're higher in the world. Oh, yeah. AT&T, whether or not they wanted to do it, whether or not Apple just put the screws to them and said, you're going to mm. charge a reasonable rate, who knows why, but that's not terrible. Adam, you know why? <laughs> to, use, to use an old phrase, that's how they get you. <laughs> that is, I mean, I think that's part of the thin end of the wedge. Yeah, you can cancel, but now you're on the on the books. Like you're you are an AT and T customer, and I just have to guess that they're smart enough to know that you it, you can escalate a relationship a step at a time. If you love that iPad, you're damn sure going to pick up an iPhone. I have a feeling. I'll tell you what. I I think that AT and T did that kicking and screaming. My my feeling is that Apple yeah. had them over a barrel. Said, "You want to keep the iPhone? You're gonna That's give us a, you're gonna give us a good price on the iPad because we want you to be happy." And you, you know, <laughs> I, I I don't think that they had much of a choice. I think that was, and that's why we still, by the way, have to buy an iPhone from AT and T. That's, ex that's exactly why, and that's unfortunate. The minute no, let me let me rephrase that. The nanosecond. 
but I can get my iPhone to work on Verizon. I'm going to say adios to AT&T. And if I have to pay $3,750 to do it, yeah. I will happily do it. I'm not an AT&T customer. I'm an, a T-Mobile customer with my Nexus One. And uh, I expect to be a Sprint customer as soon as that Evo comes. Cause I just, cause can I, I, I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, uh, am I going to regret that I got this Verizon MiFi? Because so far, so far, I am so digging it. Oh, no, it's and great. I, it's I have great. One. I love it. You, what's the bandwidth on that? Am I, am I just, am I, what, what's the limit It's going to vary. Five gigs. I'm getting five, five gigs a month. Oh, no way. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. And I have been loving this thing. You can exceed it. You can exceed it once. I mean, I've never been just, cut off. I, five gigs. My God. Well, I just took it on the road for the first time and it never wait, felt so good to not have to hit that radio button for nine. Well, that's why it's kind of cool yeah. to have a 3G iPad. I mean, the, that's what I got. That's what I got. I got that. So that, that, you and, got my that phone, and my phone my phone. So I'm sorry. I apologize. Go ahead. No, no, I'm I'm just talking along next to you. I'm we're driving <laughs> parallel down the highway. I got dropped a lot, Leo. I don't I don't think right. Sorry. <laughs> That's why one side of your head's a little flat. I noticed that. Shut hey, up. hey, you you're a friend with uh, Mr. Hodgman. Uh, has he shed a tear over the end of the uh, I'm a Mac ads? Um, we're trying to get him on. I'd like to get him on, and in fact, I'd like to get him and Justin should. on. It's a, it's a wonderful. Maybe man. next week, if uh, John, if you're, pals, if, so he could probably yeah. yeah. He could work well, Justin him. Long says so many good things about John Hodgman. I mean, he really looked up to him. Here he from uh, the One More Thing uh, podcast is a tribute to uh, the oh. I'm a Mac as I haven't previewed this, so forgive me if, <laughs> if it's profane or anything. Wait a minute, did I press the wrong button? What the hell? I got Nevada. <laughs> what the hell happened Leo, there? did you forget your medicine? <laughs> I, I got dropped on my head. Where the stage is How did I get this? I don't want adventures. Nevada. I think you got a bad bitly, I'm going to guess. Thank, Thank God, it's an ad. Uh, uh, de -de 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 -de. I like Nevada as much as the next guy, but I'm not sure. You're Nevada. helping pay for the internet. Congratulations, Leo. Yeah, yeah. Nevada, we'll let you gamble. There's the tribute right there. I hope you enjoyed that tribute. What the hell is this? Oh, I It's a retrospective. I've seen this. It's lovely. This is from the One More Thing. Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. Hey, Mac, did you hear the good news? PC Choice Chat. PC Choice Chat. Sorry, I didn't hear you there. What'd you say? This. <laughs> PC number two! Allow me to introduce the top of the line PC. Oh, wow. Cool. Hey. Okay, what are, you, what are you doing in a pizza box? Oh, <laughs> Mac. Uh, well, go on, rip it in half. Nonsense, it's beautiful. Daddy needs an upgrade. And I'm having a very difficult time finding pictures of my friend. I couldn't hear you through my virus-proof mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so? <laughs> Buongiorno. Hello. <laughs> Let's go to commercial. I Here love John Hodgman. Let's go to another commercial. You're first class all the way, PC. <laughs> I banish you. You are You're banished. banished. Oh, I have to go listen to some emo. <laughs> Cheers to innovation. <laughs> Where am I supposed to go? Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. How did that happen? I'm a PC, too. And I... What? I'm so proud of you for doing this, pal. This is great. <laughs> PCs are now 100% trouble-free. Whoa. <laughs> I'm going to go back to Keep an eye on him. What be for the whole entire world? Advertising, advertising, advertising... Fix Vista. <laughs> okay, PC, what do you do? Oh, you just grab this one. I think I got a crash. Okay, if you feel it. <laughs> Operators are standing by. I want to buy a computer. Now what? Why are you talking like that? Say, Hello, I'm a Mac. Yeah, dude, PC's definitely faster. <laughs> it's Mac's fault. You're doing a good job, Mac. Thanks. Hey. Oh, oh that kind of better. Yeah. It's not going to have any of the problems Windows 2 had. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> well, no, yeah, I think we're done. Thank you, sir. Hi, so. I'm a Mac Home Movie. What's up? PC Home Movie. <laughs> <sighs> you know how it is. Hey, PC, you are a wizard with numbers and you dress like a gentleman. You are coming to a sad realization. Cancel or allow. What you, Shut this what down. Are <laughs> what are you doing, PC? Going off the air. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. many users leaving me. And they ain't coming back. Vista's got issues. It's so glitchy. They're leaving me for Mac. Oh, that's great, actually. I... Problems? Too darn many. Patches? Not enough. 
Expensive upgrades, well, I need plenty just to get me up to snuff. Awesome. <laughs> People hate it when I crash and freeze. Vistas got me out of sorts. I'm often sick to some degree and on hold with tech support. After a year of fixes, well, I'm still blue. The problems, they repeat. Now there's only one thing left to do. Control, alt, delete. Oh, uh, isn't that great? And, uh, nice touch. Uh, is that your dog? <laughs> no. They had See, over the, 60, pro- the problem is, though, for, 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 for Osman, is that he, you know, anytime he appears anywhere in just a sensible suit, they'll think he's, he's reliving his glory days. It's, John, like, it's like Val Kilmer appearing at the mall, yep. like in his Batman costume. Yep. John will always be 007 to us. We'll, yes. You'll never live that down. One of the great ad campaigns of all time for the last three years. I'm surprised they're killing it, but I guess they're working on a new ad campaign. Um, we're seeing on Twitter people auditioning for the next Apple ad campaign. 148 characters at a time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter uh, auditions. <laughs> we, we shall see what those are. And thanks uh, again to uh, the One More Thing podcast for that great edit. Uh, a tribute to... Get a Mac. We're going to have our picks of the week coming up in just a little bit. But before we do, I do want to pick a great book for you from audible.com. Audible's the place to go for your audio books. 75,000 strong. I'm a very happy uh, Audible Platinum subscriber. Two books a month. Actually, I'm grandfathered in. I, I have something even older called a light listener plan. But it's the same thing. Two bucks, two books uh, a month. But uh, we're going to sign you up for the gold account. That's a book a month. It's a good way to start. You'll, you'll probably want to ramp up in time. But the first one is free. See? That's how we get you. And, uh, and let me tell you, there, the, the only trouble you're going to have is picking that first book. There are so many wonderful books on audible.com. They do such a great job of, um, of uh, making these books. Some of them they record themselves. Play on almost, you know, f- over 500 different devices, including all the Apple devices, uh, including the iPad, the iPhone, the iPod, but also uh, soon to come to the Android platform. They're in the beta right now, uh, I understand. And um, uh, you just, you're just going to love it. Uh, Andy Anako always has something good for us to uh, listen to. You got a pick for us this week? Absolutely. This is the 30th anniversary of the cinematic release of one of the most awesomer est films of all time. I know the rest of you can fill in the blanks here. It is The Empire Strikes Back by Mr. George Lucas and a cast of incredible, awesome uh, filmmakers. Wait a minute, that's Uh, a movie. That is a movie, but it was so successful that National Public Radio did a radio dramatization version of the entire movie, uh, including many of the original cast, including Anthony Daniels and Mark Hamill. You're not going to believe this, but they also managed to get Billy D. Williams on board, so... Now, who does John, I, quite, I see John exciting. Lithgow's on this, too. Is he Darth Vader? No, is... no John Lithgow is Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I, think, I think I've already sold this title I for most of our I think you just sold it, right yeah. Now. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's great. It's, a four, you, it's, it's almost four and a half hours long. You'll remember that the movie itself is only about two hours and 40 minutes long. Uh, so uh, not, it's, it works. It's, of of, of the, all the dramatizations that they did of the Star Wars series, this is absolutely the best one uh, because there are little lines and little extra scenes that just add little bits of backstory, not the sort of nerdy backstory where, yes, but what did Dak have to eat before he got into the snow speeder? Because he, I, I thought I saw a mustard stain on his left, the left side of his cheek. No, it's just like little more character moments that flesh it out a little bit better. Uh, I actually, I have it on CD, and I actually pulled it out uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, and re-ripped them and was listening to them in my car over the past. I remember week listening and a half. to this when it was on NPR, but I'm, I didn't know you could get it. So that's thank and you. It for is that fantastic. Too. It's not. I heard, it's not I heard the just, Star Wars one. But yeah, the Star Wars, Wars one was excellent. Back. Here, you want to hear a little? This is a Empire Strikes Back. This is. A, just keep in mind, it's not just a reading of the of the novelization. It is an actual like radio play version of it. Awesome. A, a dramatization. Yes, Lieutenant. Sir, Imperial Headquarters reports that a rebel convoy has been completely destroyed near Dara 4. At least someone is seeing a little action. Let's hope that we do before the rebellion is completely obliterated. What is the status of our probe droid operation? The probe droids we... You know, I think any book where they could say, what is the status of our probe droid operation? Mm. Straight face. Hello, ringtone. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) 
So that's great stuff. Even, even if you know the movie inside and out as I do, it's still, it's still fresh and interesting. Yeah, so wonderful recommendation. Stuff. Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, but that's just one of 75,000 titles. You can get your first book free at audible.com slash MacBreak. I'm an Audible fanatic. I've been listening to Time Traveler's Wife, and I just I can't get enough of it. I just love it. Um, I mean, I watched the movie, and I loved the movie. By the way, it's a great movie, but uh, but the book has so much more detail and so much more going on. I always like to listen to the book before I see the movie. So if you haven't seen The Empire Strikes Back... <laughs> no, see the movie first. And <laughs> okay, all right. That's one ex one exception. Congratulations on your release from that murder, that moan. It would have to be a multiple murder rap if you were in jail for 30 years. But <laughs> I haven't <laughs> seen it yet. Hey, Andy, let's get our pick of the week from Andy Anotko of the Chicago Sun-Times. Uh, this is a very simple tool, a simple tool, cheap to, uh, it's from a company called JS8media.com. It's called Audio Refurb. Uh, it is, it is a very, very simple audio reprocessor, uh, that does a lot of things that you can do in GarageBand. Like you have a huge, like multi-band equalizer. You have a big bank of effects. Uh, each of these pop-up effects, you know, if you want to add a little bit more to the bottom, if you want to add, uh, tone down the reverb, if you want to do some flanging, I, I'm making up lots of terms because I'm not an audio engineer. <laughs> the point is that if you have an existing recording that you think is pretty good, but it's missing a little bit of something, or you can just sort of sense that, oh, there's just a lot in the middle that's just not there that needs to be goosed up. Uh, I used to do this. Uh, this is something that I do a lot uh, when, like, I've uh, I, there's a I, I've ripped a DVD and there's a song on that DVD that is not available on CD because it's a 30 year old a 30 year old uh, a movie or something and I want that as an mp3 just so I can listen to it but the, uh, it's in stereo but the audio quality is a little bit off you can do these th sort of things in GarageBand but I find it's just so slow and it's just so cumbersome and oftentimes I will only do this for songs I'm really really interested in in audio refurb it's a simple $20 utility it's a full de I think it's a, I think it's a full demo before you pay the money that will just let you get in and get out and process that file really really quickly and I believe it'll also handle the conversion uh, to mp3 without having to dump it over over into iTunes. So if you're a big fan of the right tool for the right job, as opposed to uh, using one tool for just about everything you want to throw at it, it's an easy 20 bucks to spend. Uh, they have a couple other tools that uh, I was neck and neck between Audio Refurb, which is a tool that I use once a week or so, and another thing they do called Audio Lobe that does nothing but control this. It, it will just reburn a copy of this song that's been sped up or slowed down as you see fit. So if you are, as me, a really kind of Awesome! I didn't say awesome. I meant awful. Uh, <laughs> ukulele player. Uh, awesome. It, 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 lets, awesome. It, it will let you awesome at my awfulness. I, do, I believe I'm <laughs> unprecedented in the badness to which I'm capable of. Uh, but if you want to learn a new song that you that you're a fan of, you can get the you can download a song, whatever. Uh, reprocess it in audio lobe to slow it way, 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 way down so you can figure out where the chords are and how he's playing it. And then now here's the big, here's the most important part where the $15 for audio lobe kicks in. You then record it in GarageBand at the same speed at which you rehearsed it half speed because that's how about only fast you can play it. Then you put it back into Audio Lobe and then amp it back up to its original speed. So now it's like, my God, he's like Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yes, <laughs> if you let me, if you if, if if I can play those chords at one sixteenth speed as as Stevie Ray Vaughan, and then just reprocess it. It's a good fifteen dollars if you want to create a false reputation for you being a skilled <laughs> guitar player or keyboardist. Hey, it never stopped Miley Cyrus. You just go for it. You just go for it, man. Thank you, Andy Anatko, and Mr. Merlin Mann. Your pick hmm. of the week this week, sir. Um, I'm looking for the price on this. I, uh, excuse me. <laughs> I was uh, <laughs> I was recently outdoors. Fisherman's friend. I was recently outdoors <laughs> yes. uh, at night. And uh, I don't know. I thought it, yeah, I'll get to you to a plug here uh, for uh, Max FunCon, which is the best thing ever. Uh, something my friend Jesse Thorne put on. Jesse Thorne, who does The Sound of Young America, the wonderful radio show and podcast that everyone should donate to. Um, Jesse puts on this thing called Max FunCon. And uh, it's an event that people like uh, us and you look nice today and Mr. Hodgman and Mr. Colton and uh, gosh, who else was there? Andrew WK and a bunch of people just going. It's this really awesome celebration of awesomeness. Anyway, I was standing outside and it was really dark. It's at Lake Arrowhead, California. So it's very dark and you can see the stars. And for some reason, out of nowhere, I thought, you know, I like astronomy, but I don't understand it. Um, I'd like to know more. So I sat there and spent $40 on astronomy applications my phone before finding one that I think is pretty amazing. And it's called Distant Suns. And basically, Distant Suns lets you point your phone at the sky and it shows you everything that you're seeing. Now, you can't see this on camera right now, but uh, I can point it up. It'll show me the sun, the moon, whatever, um, any constellations. And you can see that if you're on video, 
Uh, you can, sorry, I apparently don't know how mirrors work. Um, <laughs> but you can see as it's sort of the equivalent of mouses over a constellation, it fills it in with a little drawing to like show you the constellation. It's got tons of widgets. There's a bunch of these. This is actually a pretty interesting for how specific this audience is. There's a, a bunch of neat apps, but I really like Distant Suns. You can say, show me comments, show me things that are happening right now. Um, and it utilizes, obviously, the, you know, all the jazz that the phone has, the accelerometer stuff and all that. And I just thought it was really neat for somebody who, somebody like me who doesn't really understand. <laughs> I've read like one Stephen Hawking book and I have a phone. So it was a perfect pairing. Um, Do they designs. have an iPad version or it's just iPhone? Um, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, they may, but uh, I there's a bunch of these. I, I bought several of these. I was sitting there at the <laughs> sitting there with my very good friend Kevin Murphy, and because uh, I'm a nerd, and I was thrilled to be talking to somebody from that program. Uh, J, uh, P Universe is another one I got. Panoscope, very cool. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with Distant Suns because. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's something really uh, interesting and humbling. I'm thinking uh, about our place in the universe, and sometimes when you're smoking in Nicaraguan and staring at the sky, the phone can really help you. Here's my daughter. There she is. Aw. There's, a, there's, a, there's Eleanor. Hello, oh, Gosh, it's horrible there. Oh, there, that's better. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Distant Suns. Very cool. And, and Andy, Andy, a follow-up on last week's Andy, that air sharing, I still can't make it use Dropbox. I think I'm crazy, but air sharing, I want to follow up. It's a great, great app. It was a really good pick. And I'm, I'm just loving it. I'm still using Goodreader more because I think it does more of what I immediately need. But the uh, air sharing is so much prettier. Thank you, Merlin Man. Distant Suns from DistantSuns.com. And now, ladies oh. and gentlemen, Scott Bourne of ScottBourne.com with his pick of the week. My pick of the week is something I'm about to review, review over at PhotoFocus.com. And it's a little less than an Alex if you're buying it new. It's a lot less than an Alex if you're upgrading. And that would be Adobe Photoshop CS5. Oh, yeah. All right. I haven't uh, played with it yet. What do you think? It is, if you're a photographer, it is the upgrade you need. I can't speak as to whether or not designers or illustrators, the other contingents that buy Photoshop will like it, but I can tell you if you're a photographer, it rocks. A couple of important points. Number one, it ships with built-in noise reduction that's better than any of the plugins you've been using. Really? So you don't need things like Noise Ninja anymore. It has great built-in noise reduction. Number two, if you're into that crazy, crazy HDR and tone mapping and who isn't, you no longer need Photomatix Pro. You really? can just do all of your... The, the HDR has always been available in Photoshop since about CS3. However, the thing it's lacked is tone mapping. So Adobe fixed that in CS5. You can now tone map your HDR images, which is the crucial second step to make a photograph look like a photograph. You got that. The content aware fill, everybody's seen that demo online. It's very amazing. Uh, edge refinement is superb. Uh, it, it's just a very powerful program. And if you have one of the newer computers with a nice GPU and lots of RAM, it's smooth as butter. All right. And uh, it's 189 at Amazon to upgrade. Uh, it's uh, quite a bit more to buy it brand new. It's like six. It's an Alex. That's, I think the definition of an Alex is of cost yeah, of hey, hey, Scott, Moore, can I ask you a question? <laughs> you, you said there were two things that helped something really look like a photo. What were the two toning, things? Toning? Toning? Well, if you're going to do an HDR photograph in Photoshop oh, before, okay. you, you could not do tone mapping. Now you can. And tone mapping is the second step. And, and most professional photographers have used a piece of software called Photomatix Pro for a long time mm -hmm. to make that happen. But you, you can save money. You can justify the purchase of your Photoshop because you don't need Noise Ninja. You don't need Photomatix Pro. And uh, you can do all of that natively in Photoshop. <laughs> it's faster. Um, the, the interface is, is very, very consistent. Is it 64-bit for Mac now? If you have the right configuration. If you're on Snow Leopard and all that? Yep. Good. Yep. Now, I, the you convinced me because I wasn't, I, I've been sitting on CS4 for a while. You convinced me. Mm -hmm. well, there is one quick question also, Scott. Has it, has it, has it finished installing? <laughs> <laughs> By the yeah, way, you might installed. want to check. I think there's you know, an update. You really, there's an update. You really, sh you really shouldn't accept the, fl the floppy option. You know, they're available <laughs> yeah. on DVD now. The, uh, the, the other thing I want to warn you about, Leo, is if you got a lot of plugins, I do. CS4. Yeah, they will not work in CS5. I have the Topaz and the Nick collection. You have to wait for them to be updated. So that's that's kind of a one of the bummers. Maybe I'll wait. But that's my pick. CS5 Photoshop from Adobe. Now, Adam, I don't know if we warned you that we do this pick thing. Would you like to? <laughs> would you like to <laughs> Luckily, play? Let me go last. So <laughs> yeah, I gave you some time to think about it. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, you review stuff in tidbits every week, so I know you got something yeah, in there. 
Well, there's, lo there's lots of things, and you know, but I'm also sort of trying to catch up on what you've already done. Don't worry was, about that. You don't have to worry about that. You you get to see, you know you you our guests get to pick anything they want, regardless of. <sighs> well, I was going to say, good readers definitely was was on my list until until Merlin sort of implied that it was no, talked about I last week. No, I love it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Yeah. We've uh, publishing PDF books. Good reader is just the way to go. But I wanted to actually change gears a little bit. And uh, since it is sort of in honor of our being here for 20 years, um, I wanted to talk about a program that's been on the Mac possibly longer than just about anything else uh, in continuous development um, that, that I use regularly and really like. And it's sort of un it's unfortunate that it's not well better known. Um, ProView Development's Panorama Database. And it's been on the Mac since 1984. Wow. which is pretty darn cool to have a program that's actually still around. Um, and it's that's that's like before Helix. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's oh, yeah. amazing. Wow. And so the thing that Panorama is RAM-based, which used to be a big deal um, because it made it faster than hard disk this. But what I really like about it is that I'm not really a database guy. And so... If you're, if you're a serious database guy, you put a lot of thought into your database ahead of time, you set up your indexes, you know what you want in and you want out, and you, you, you get it all right to begin with. Um, but what I like about Panorama, and the reason why I use it, is that I can just do something really simple. It uses a spreadsheet view as your sort of base view. You can make all the fancy forms and whatnot you want. But the spreadsheet view is the way that a lot of people think about data, and it's a very easy way to get started. And then as you think about new things, you can add them in. And so I built uh, a fairly complicated royalty management system for take control in Panorama, starting from, okay, I get this text file from our shopping cart. How am I going to figure out how much I owe each of my authors? And, you know, it's grown and grown. And now it's, you know, like six interlinked databases and various different things. And I didn't have to know what I wanted ahead of time. I was able to evolve the database as I went, which is um, my understanding um, from working with other database systems, usually pretty hard in other database systems. It's usually a big re refresh if you want to say, well, now I need to do this other completely different thing. So that's been, uh, that's been a real help for, for us and for our business. And um, it's just a, it's a fun little program. And the guy who does it, uh, Jim Ray, is uh, just he's the best guy ever, writes his own documentation, thousands of pages, does his own support. You know, he's really on, top, on the ball. Yeah, I, I see Jim every year at uh, Macworld, and he, it's, a, it's a great company and a really yeah. neat guy. And you, you're right, it's, it, we, don't pick, uh, we haven't picked him, in, uh, and I think it's good to highlight it. It's a really great tool that people probably knew about once <laughs> and have, and have <laughs> yeah. forgotten about, for, right? Are they still around? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They are. And they're up to version 6 now, which is great. Yeah. Good pick, out. It's got some really neat new features. Good um, pick. One of the features in, in version 6, actually, that's really cool, is it's what I call the Eudora feature. Um, you control click <laughs> on any piece of data, like a date in a database, and then you can say, show me more like this. Oh, so you just that. click on a control click on a piece of data and say, show me all the records from this date or after this date, things like that. It's just brilliant. Really cool. Thank you for your pick and thank you for tidbits. 20 years, it's great. I'd like to say for the record, thank you also. I mean, you're, you've been around doing this for so long and in my early-ish days, of taking the Mac seriously, uh, it was just it was the only thing of its kind, and slightly other stuff came along and come and gone. It, like I just want to thanks for doing that because it, it was huge to a lot of us in the early days. It still is. I mean, uh, thank you. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I steal most of my stuff from uh, <laughs> from, tid, from tidbits. It's a great it's a great resource. Apple News for the rest of us. T i d b i t s dot com. And uh, don't forget the, also the uh, the publishing uh, arm of the tidbits. Uh, folks because they've got the, the in control stuff there's tons of it in every aspect of, of Macintosh uh, and iPhone and it really is fantastic Adam it's been great having you on thank you for joining us this week Thanks we really appreciate me. it I'm not going to do a pick because we're so over time <laughs> I just, <we'll> just, <laughs> just, but I do I will say this it is towel day and let's not forget that of course the day that uh, uh, Douglas to, to, to commemorate Douglas Adams yes. uh, the great author of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy um uh, Towel Day uh, is a kind of uh, harkens back to the um, important towel in the book. And uh, Douglas Adams passed away on May 25th. Gosh, how long has it been now? It's 10 years ago, 2001, I think. Wow. Um, almost 10 years. He passed away May 11th. So Towel Day is uh, May 25th of every year. Don't panic, my friends, but do carry your towel. 
and uh, and remember the great Douglas Adams. Thank you, everybody, don't, for don't being panic. here. Don't panic. <laughs> don't panic. Andy Anakos at the Chicago Sun Times. Oops, that's not him. If, <laughs> Uh, uh, what is that iPad doing? He's been replaced by an iPad. <laughs> Andy and I go, is it the Chicago? Yes. There's an app for that. There's an app for Andy. There is not. <laughs> Chicago Sun-Times. And don't forget his website, www.cwob.com. That's where you'll find Andy's writings. But uh, I have to say, the stuff you've been writing for the uh, Sun-Times has been just fantastic lately. Really enjoyed all of that. Great Metropolitan newspaper. Thanks for your advertising. Keep it, keep it going, folks. <laughs> uh, Merlin Mann is at 43folders.com at You Look Nice Today, which is still the funniest podcast on the Internet at youlooknicetoday.com. He also does a, a number of other websites. But I think if you go to 43folders, you'll probably find everything. If you've never for. listened to the show, um, our last episode is the first really good live show we've ever had. I'm actually pretty proud of it. And uh, if you like poop jokes um, and, 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 and wiener jokes, this is probably, this is going to, this is our Magna Carta. I and mean, this is going to, this is our highest <laughs> moment. You will learn, you will learn what it involved in making number three. That's all I'm saying. Lonely Sandwich and uh, Scott Simpson from the Paper Company and uh, Merlin <laughs> Mann. It's a must listen. You look nice today. Thanks, Leo. I appreciate it when you say that. Thank you. Com. Oh, God, I love it. It's, it's, it's hysterical. Uh, Scott Bourne, great to see you again. Please don't be a stranger. We'll uh, now that you've uh, landed in Gig Harbor for the winter <laughs> or the summer, yeah, or whatever yeah. su whatever season it is in Gig Harbor these days, uh, we'll we'll get you on more often. Scottbourne.com. Yeah. He does so many other things. Photofocus.com and the iPad Show with Andy and Otko and, and a lot more. But it's all at Scottbourne.com, right? You can find everything at Scottbourne.com, which is run thanks to Merlin Mann on Tumblr. Really oh, cool, man. Good yeah, for you. you on my Tumblr. I didn't know that. I'm going well, to have to follow you, know. you now. That's yeah, I, uh, I I took a Merlin's advice to heart, and I said, man, this is really a great idea, and I've used it a long time and just love it. Well, I'm following I've met you a lot now. Of really nice, I met a lot of really nice people on uh, Tumblr. It's very cool. I very love cool, yeah. Tumblr. I love it, yep. In fact, that would be a good pick. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It is a good pick. You know, oh, and, and that's what going. I like about it is I can, I can push all of my live stream to that right. one site. It's all there. So yeah. easy. I just wanted to point note in passing from NPR, today is also the birthday of Frank Oz, and I would like to say happy birthday for uh, bringing me so much uh, joy over the years. Down, just, I, I love that guy, and I'm just very glad he was born today. The voice of Yoda, of Cookie Monster. He's Cookie Miss Monster. Piggy. Miss Piggy. Yeah. I, think, I, I think in tribute, we should end this podcast by all demonstrating the difference between near... And far. Near. And far. Near. Far. My problem is my kid watches Sesame Street. Now, all whenever I hear Grover, all I hear is Yoda. Around and around and around. Over and through. Yes, you will. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We'll see you next time. Another Mac break is in the can or something.